Oh, up oh, there's the green light that says I'm uploading. How are you guys doing? I'm back from vacation. I'm working on tile animations today. This is stream 216. Also, you might notice that there's a new overlay up here. I'm helping CM Griffin test out his chat overlay called Stream Parrot. You can see him developing it live on his stream whenever he's on. Oh, and that uh, is not gonna, that not going to work because I haven't enabled the uh, golem. Hold on. We'll fix this. It's been like almost a week. Enable. And I got to wait 10 seconds and I'll try that little command again. There we go. Interesting. I have the bot on the ignore list, but it still shows up in the overlay up there. I wonder if I maybe misspelled it. Hey there, Nui. How are you doing? It's not supposed to put the bot's answers up there. Let me peek. I didn't spell it correctly. I guess the ignore list isn't working. I'm double, I'm double and I'm triple checking. Maybe we'll do let, let's let's remove it and then add it add it back. Ignored user. Okay, I added it back. Let's have the bot say something. Let's say ping. Oh, yeah, and stream elements isn't being ignored either. Hmm. 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 Before I forget, let me enter. Let me put in a a, a little thing in the Discord for the overlay. See, um, ignored users doesn't seem to be working. I have the stream elements bought on the ignore list, and their messages are still showing up in the overlay. Yeah, I'm. Uh, this is it's. This overlay is an alpha right now, so it's expected there are a lot of bugs. So that's one reason that I'm running it is to help Chris debug it. We'll turn it into something awesome that uh, will be the best Twitch chat overlay of them all. Stream elements, you've really been running for eight days without a rest? My goodness. Okay, anyway, for my work, uh, I worked a bit while I was on vacation because there was a, you know, a lot of downtime. So I did get a bunch of stuff done, and I don't even have it running right now. I need to get that up and running. So let me do that. Set up my shells here. It's like playing a shell game. I wonder if this will even work. Hey there, playing with skizzers. It's been a while since I ran this thing on my computer here, at least. NPM start. I fixed a bunch of bugs. I, should, I really should have kept a change log other than the git commit history of what I did while I was on vacation. But the, the problem with discarding snapshots too aggressively is fixed. There are a bunch of um, things added for scripting in the game. We got to open Twitch. Oh no. How was the vacation? It was, it was pretty good. Tried to see fireworks, but we um the campground we were at we we were we were at the wrong angle and so we couldn't see them. That was a bummer. Other than that though, it was good. How how have all of you been in the meantime? Where we were there was also a lot of uh twenty somethings from college uh partying and it was just so crowded the um network was constantly congested and so I was actually pretty much disconnected from the web the whole time. Okay, cool. The game appears to be running. I'm just waiting for the um, NPM start to finish this repaired in the meantime. Ah, blazing white light. Oh, NPM start. You always take a long time for me. You know, interestingly enough, my MacBook is a lot faster to do this stuff than my PC. 
Maybe I should start streaming from my MacBook. Gizzer says, I had to help one of your junior devs set up their Git because they were using sudo. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're letting your junior dev use sudo? <laughs> they should not be permitted to use such a command. Well, you know, you run into all kinds of things with junior devs, right? Maybe you'll learn that, that you enjoy being a teacher in the end. You don't have a say in that. Ah, oh, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Chickens is my password locally. Yes, please remember me. Okay, let's see if I can identify the things I added in the game. Actually, it's not going to be visible from the normal user. It's going to be visible from the admin tool here. So a couple of things I added. I added this all new scripts panel. And here I can add scripts like this. Edit them. And I can say uh, function foo. Uh, let's just have it do a game chat. Hello world. End. Submit that. And then let's say I had an error in there. Like let's say I forgot that punctuation. It has this nice um, error output that I can clear. So I can uh, make sure that all my scripts are working. And I can run this now too. So I can say Lua uh, re um, just foo. And over here it says hello world. A couple of th other things I added here. Um, it shouldn't. It says it says on invalid JSON because I didn't say return. Let's say it return two plus two is four. It's also printing the number of seconds it took the server to execute that. So this is telling me it took fifty one microseconds to to add two and two together, and one point three milliseconds to um, send this hello world message to every client of the game brought up with the CTO, but he was against it. Bring it up with the CEO. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I always tend to think junior devs should only be given tools they're, they've proven competency in. The other way to do it is um, you um, catch them doing something stupid with the tools they have, and then you bring it up and say, well, looks like they made some mistake. They need to be trained on that before they're allowed to use it. And that sometimes works. Now look at that. Entity 5627 is no more. Why does it say point zero? Well, because in Lua, everything, every number is floating point. I don't actually remember doing that. Oh, I, I remember where that was. There was that special uh, death square right here, right? That had a script attached to it. Uh, which I need to format because it looks like it is n doesn't have any white space in. Let's fix that. Lua format paste submit. What? Got rid of all my formatting? Oh, because it maybe because it thinks it's the same. Here, let me change something subtly. Uh, I'll add another space here. Oops. I can't believe I just did that. I hit remove. Well, good thing I have it in my clipboard. Oh, wait a minute. No, I don't. Eh. I'll have to get it back from the snapshot. Yeah, that reminds me. There's another thing I wanted to do. I want to make these remove things uh, require confirmation. Uh, actually, I wonder if I could just... I have it here. I'll just copy another step trigger. Yeah, this will work. Trigger. Paste. Add. Edit this script. Copy this and paste that there. Submit. Very careful not to press that button. Oh, is it because I had to hit... Oh, because I have to update first. That's what it was. Yeah. All right. I was, I was, I've been working on this one over the weekend where I can edit the script like that and not have to hit the update button because it actually edits it directly. And I forgot that um, 
this one over here, when you edit, it actually you have to hit update before it actually submits it. Forgot about that. Anyway, yeah, that death script. Where it, um, if it says, it says if you're not invulnerable, then destroy you, that entity. Anyway, let's see, what else did I do over the vacation? So I added this whole thing with the reporting the script errors. Uh, what else did I do? I think, did I clean something up here? Oh, there were some subtle bugs in the dialogue editor I fixed that weren't that, that aren't really worth showing. Oh, I fixed this so that I can I can actually type there and it won't uh, fight me. And not until I hit update does it move my camera. Little little stuff like that that people don't really care about. Juniors in your company have no technical direction. That's bad. The whole the whole uh, goal of a company bringing in new people is to train them right. They need to be they need to be they need to be whipped into shape, skizzers. It's really bad. Bad. I forgot I did this last week. This was a script that looked for Bob and found where he was. So that if I step on that spot, it says Bob is at that location. We can see him down here. Name job guard. Bye. Yeah, I think most of the most of the work I did was in this scripts panel and showing script errors. So yeah, now I can um, add reusable bits of Lua code into the game that that the once defined like this, they can be used elsewhere. So I um need to, needs to start populating the scripts in the real game. Actually, that's that reminds me. I was going to take this latest code and deploy it. The only, you're the only non-junior PHP dev in the company. Ah. Uh. Sorry about that, Skizzers. You have a tough job, I think. Just bringing up my Linux box here. All right. I wonder if it's safe to deploy the front end right now without the back end. Should be okay. Go ahead and do it. Let me see what the version history looks like. Okay, it was 119. Well, I definitely added stuff, so I should call it 1.20. I should call it. Uh, status? Git push, git push tags. npm run build. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to, I messed up. I forgot to update the version number. And uh, I can guess I can just let that run while I fix that. That should be here. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong folder. This is Iron Glove. Uh, let's see. This one. One at zero. If I hit save here, I bet it will get really confused. Um, actually, let's let that run for a while. Because in parallel with building um, that and deploying it, I also want to figure out how to do um, more um, work on sprites in Phaser. So the idea was that instead of using a sprite sheet like I'm using, I want to be, have a little bit more control over the texture coordinates. So I think I want to move to a texture atlas instead of having a sprite sheet. So that I can... I, I guess it's not... X why it's, it's UV, but same thing. The coordinates within the texture to use to uh, pick each tile out. And yeah, right now I'm using Sprite Sheet, and I think I want to move to um, a texture atlas. I want to be able to build the texture atlas uh, from what the server tells me. So this is what a texture atlas looks like. You get... Full control over the um, source X and Y 
and individual frame positions. That's what I want. I had to construct this JSON and give it to Phaser. And I believe... I don't need to put that. Let's see what I had to, I had to do. I bought this is this is my old prototype game. I wanted to see if did that string actually appear here. No, it didn't. So it knew to load that from the server, I think. Right. So I think goal number one for today is to try to replace that sprite sheet with a. Um, with a um, on-the-fly generated texture atlas. So every tile is going to have to have a string file name, which I guess I can just make a number turned into a string. I, I, we'll have to see. We'll have to try this out. So I have some links in case I get stuck that I, can, that I looked up last night that Looked like they had a bunch of information in it that was relevant. Right, so the idea is I was going to add a new frame value to a tile object. Wait, wait frame or frames? Should be frames, right? Yes, yeah, so every tile can have one or more frames. And this would be for an animation loop. So each frame would have um, X and Y coordinates within the texture for that frame. And then with a scroll flag, that's to uh, imitate what the Ultima games did for certain tiles that would just scroll vertically in a, in a sort of loop to um, show a little bit of an animation effect without having to have drawn each frame individually. It's kind of hard to explain without actually showing it. I wonder if we can just show it up really quick. Uh, Ultima 4. Now can I get um, a GIF? How about water animation? Hmm. I guess we can just show this without the audio. Greetings. I am no... Okay, no, that's just, this is the wrong. It's not the, not that port of it. I wanted the original. Ah, here we go. Can I please turn off the audio before it plays? There we go. There, there we go. See how the water is scrolling? It scrolls in a in a loop so that the bottom row ends up on the top row every other frame. So I'm gonna kind of imitate that effect. Hey there, radon ninety. How are you doing? I just realized something. Ninety is the atomic number for radon, isn't it? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ninety, eighty six. That doesn't quite match. <laughs> Is 90 uh, a radioactive isotope of radon? All right. So that's what that scroll flag was. And then duration is um, so that we can have different animation frames last longer than others. I think for a lot of the tiles that I made, there were only two frames, and they would have equal duration. And it was just a flip-flop, just like the way Ultima did, um, between two frames. But it can be more elaborate. We could have multiple frames. So that goes into um, tile, uh, tile set panel changes. I'm going to need to be able to add the animation sequences for tiles. So all the same columns for all the same fields that I'm planning to add to the uh, frames list for tiles. So none of this is really going to work unless I, do the, unless I get this straightened out. So that's what I'm going to look at first. And in parallel, I'm making sure that, okay, it, that built, let me build it again. I think the second build, oh, shit, I forgot to hit save here. I'm just making mistakes left and right, as usual. There we go, 120 zero. I felt okay terminating it right away because it didn't get very far. All right. 
that's going, and now I have, uh, wait a second, what happened to my, okay, there we go. The window was truncated. Getting my X windows up and running here. Wait a minute. How come that didn't show up when I clicked that? Oh, there it is. Oh, weird. That was weird. Hey there, Money Hate. It's going okay. Working out the working out the bugs in my stream setup since it's been like what four days. I get rusty that quick. All right. Projects. Let's add my key before I forget. Pull. Two weeks of bugs only. You're drained already? Bugs. Yeah, you'll never get rid of bug all the bugs. You just have to budget that into your life, right? You're going to be spend spending time all the time until you retire working on bugs. Okay, that's going in parallel with this. Okay, this is done, so deploy. There goes nothing. I should cheat and just um update this tag, shouldn't I? Oh wait a minute, I haven't um I haven't checked that in, have I? Haven't I? Bump front end version to one twenty zero. Update the tag. Push. Update the. Don't do this at home. <laughs> Moving tags around with the push with the push force. You spend two weeks only doing bugs. I I remember doing that in my last job where we accumulate so many bugs we would just decide for one sprint we're only fixing bugs we're not adding any new features. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, so if 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 I was if I was working in a team really strictly I wouldn't do this I would just have to abandon one twenty zero and move to one twenty dot one. And say, well, 120.0 didn't get labeled right. But I feel like I can cheat. Okay, now let's see if that totally broke the game. Reload that. I forgot to push that that icon, so let me do that right now. Um, public AWS S3 copy scripts to my bucket and then reload i wonder if that's going to be a problem with um cloudfront's caching it's going to think oh well that file doesn't isn't there yeah i might have to live with that being broken for a while Okay, so I need to update the back end. Oh, what's that? And I just realized my overlays are overlapping. <laughs> I need to fix that. <laughs> Thanks for the sub, Rally Monkey. Ten months, wow. Okay, yeah, I gotta I gotta fix this overlay position, don't I? Hmm. Maybe shift it off to the left a little bit. I'll do I'll do that after the stream. Let me remind myself to do that. Uh, shift stream elements overlay to the left a bit. How are you, Rally Monkey? Thanks again for the sub. Ten months is a long time. I think what I wanted to do was try this with my um, normal user account. Make sure I didn't break anything. Uh, 
I uh, sure remember me. It's... Uh-oh. I don't think it's working. <laughs> yeah, I broke it. Uh, probably something the player is doing... Hmm. It's interesting it's completely black. Hmm. There I am in the world. Can I actually move? No. Got into a bit of a rut, but making progress again in your stuff. More sleep helps a lot. Yeah, consi consistent sleep schedule works wonders. Okay, well, the client is broken for a while. I think I'm just going to update the back end. And hopefully it all fixes that. So let's see. I remember, remember how to do this. CMake, build, build, release. Be just my day for on Monday to have this not build on Linux and then have to debug a, or fix a compiler error that's Linux only. I say that because to invoke Murphy's Law that if I expect a problem, then there won't be one. It's just warning me that Lua is doing something dangerous. Whoa, use of temp name is dangerous. <laughs> Okay, I think we're good. So, um, uh, L pack prod, right? And then Python three tools deploy. Oh, I don't remember what version we were on for the back end. One sixteen, so we'd move to one seventeen. Yep. Uh that was the version number. There we go. Uploading done. Successful. Okay. I'm going over to the back end. Oh, and there was um a way to make this transition a little bit easier for myself which was go to here download the configuration and then off screen edit this to have the new version number in it save and then um, upload that back and then hit a snapshot and then stop. And then restart. And hopefully it comes up with the new version. Yay. Now, did this come up? Yay. All right. New version of the game going. Uh... And the golem's back in, in business, too. Nice. I'll just assume that that is good and then drop that background window. All right. Your food's ready. You got to go to the office afterward. Okay. Thanks, Skizzers. Have a good day. Who do they think they are to tell me what's dangerous? <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey there, Hoden Doe. Your message got a little uh, hidden there because it was, for me, it's the same color as Raleigh Monkey. How are you doing? By the way, if you haven't noticed, you probably have, I'm testing out CM Griffin's um, new overlay called Stream Parrot. Hey, prop elements. So, yeah, this used to be Stream Elements doing that. Now it's Stream Parrot. And we're going to try it out for a while. Potato Escobar, how are you doing? Okay, let's see if I broke anything. Let's see if I can read this sign. Sign works. Where are all the monsters? Are they all hanging out back here? Yeah. 
including Bill. Let's see if I can still talk to Bill. Oh, my sword got broken. I'm Bill. Job. Tiger. How very observant of you. Bill. That's my name. Bye. Goodbye. It's a little glitchy. I know why that is. I can't kill him because I don't have a sword. I thought I made my sword, like, last... Like, the durability really high, but I guess that was someone else's sword I did that on. I need to go get one. Let's pick up some swords. Now I'm armed. Oh yeah. Let's go weed out the population in here. I shouldn't be able to kill Bill, though. Kill Bill. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Now Bill's indestructible. They get this guy haunting the back room here. All right. One last monster. Okay. I need to make sure I didn't break anything here. I can still do that. Cool. All right. I think everything is back up and running. Switch that tab over there. Okay, that's working now. Cool. And I can add scripts to the game now if I wanted. All right. Cool. Everything is working. You can log out of that. I'll just leave that up. Okay, cool. We uh, can exit this all out. Let me think about this. Yes. Close my X windows. This should, might block the screen for a bit. Log out. Sudo. Power off. Shutting down my X windows. Okay, cool. Tag that back in one seventeen zero and push the tags. All right, cool. So with that out of the way, all the latest changes in the game are live now. And I'm going to work on replacing the sprite sheet with a texture atlas. So right now this is all drawn with a sprite sheet. So they look like this. It's just, well, it's easier to show with this window, actually. Like the avatars, right? It's one image that's whatever, uh, like 300-something pixels wide and 32 tall. And it's broken up into individual um, tiles by phaser just by... Um, N, if N is the uh, offset into the uh, sprite sheet, then it's N times 32 um, pixels horizontally is the anchor point, and then zero is the vertical anchor point. If the, if the texture was 64 tall instead of 32, then it would wrap. So you get all the way to the right-hand side, and then the next, t the next sprite is the very next one below. So I wanted to move to a more flexible method where I could have an arbitrary dimension image and then and then just pick by x and y coordinates where every frame or tile was picked from so that's what i understand to be a texture atlas in the lingo of um, phaser and i had prototyped this back in february and when we use the texture atlas it kind of looks like this this is generated by a program called texture packer and i had been reading through some forum posts basically the the folks who work on Phaser and the guy who works on Texture Packer, they kind of work together so that Phaser just understands this format, and the format sort of just grew gen uh, organically. It, it, it's not specified any, in any particular place, so there's no like format definition documentation I can look up. I basically just need to reverse engineer this. What kind of Git flow do I use for development? You're trying to move your current versioning control to Git, but you can't find a good workflow? Um...
let me think and let me let me see if I understand. So you're asking like what habits you would form to do a uh, version control in Git, or do you mean like what kind of tools would you use? I I mostly just use the command line. I, I'll work for a while and then um, use use my right right now it's Git GUI and use my favorite. Um, I mean you can use your favorite um, way to do this, but um, uh, I'm not describing this very well at all, am I? Uh, let me think about this. Yes, yeah, so let's see the time there a little bit better. Um, let's say, for example, that what I was working on yes yesterday, I was working on a bunch of different things. So what I would do typically is start working on one feature or one bug and, you know, after, after an hour or so, get it done and check that in as a commit and um, move on to the next thing. So you can see during the course of the day, I made about six or seven commits. So I worked a little bit in the morning and then a little bit, a little bit in the afternoon and then some more in the evening. And so generally my workflow is every 10 to 20 minutes is like one small bug or one small feature or a step towards implementing a feature and I'll make a, a, a check-in and try to describe what, what I'm working on and um, just I just use the normal um, like I use git GUI to check to formulate that commit there's also something built in to a VS code to do that so this one here right you can just type in here and hit control enter and it, it gets in here and I don't know. It's pretty simple, I think. Do you release like feature? Oh, you're talking about that. No, I, I would just keep it simple. If you're working solo, I just have one branch called master. The only time I'd ever have another branch is if I needed to work more than one iteration cycle, like more than one hour or one day on something. And I wouldn't be finished for a while. And, and I didn't want to screw up the, um, the main the main work, right? Then I might have a branch named after the thing I'm experimenting on. So actually, I can show an example of that. Like when I was doing um, this prototype, I had d done it with Pixie for a while, and then I wanted to see, well, what does it look like with Phaser? So master branch is also, I also named it Pixie, is the prototype game, and then I went and uh, took a day or two to work on this um, phaser alternative to it and just name that a branch phaser. Um, if I chose to keep both, I would merge these two together. If I decided to move to phaser, I would just fast forward master up to phaser and drop the pixie. So it gives you kind of op different options. YouTube videos? Yeah, maybe. I think since I'm working solo, the workflow is pretty simple. And I hardly ever have different branches other than master. Ooh, that that over, doesn't overlap with chat very well, does it? That's maybe a little bit better. Um, it gets more complicated when you're a team, when you're in a team with you know several people, where you might have people working on features that take several days or weeks, and then you need to they need to work independently. So there, I would just have a different a different branch for every feature and um, keep them separate from master and then either um, if the people in your team are good enough they can uh, when they're ready to merge their stuff in they do the merge themselves otherwise you have someone else who is um, merging in feature branches as they get as they get done but um, like I don't think you really need a lot of things that people say you need like release branches and dev branches I've never really seen the point of it because a lot of those, they, they're, they're just quick offshoots from master that get merged right back in, or they just never get used. <laughs> so I think just use what, or, uh, use what seems to work for you. Every, every project, every team is different. Yeah. My workflow, again, is very simple because it's just me. So it's just a master branch. Occasionally, it'd be an offshoot branch, like this phaser branch. But nothing more complicated than that. Um, 
I do do a, a couple of um, things with tags. So I will, um, whenever I have a version that I want to release that I have a, a name or a number to, I always make a tag so I can go back and recreate that. The other thing I do is, because I have multiple repositories, I will um, uh, use a, I made my own tool, but you can, you can use any kind of tool for this. You could even use, like, if you're using Git submodules, it, it's done for you, where um, the, um, all the sub repositories that you're pulling together are just listed somewhere. If it's git submodule, it's in the dot git sub the dot submodules or git submodules file. I can't remember what it's named. And when I make a release, like if I wanted to get to keep a historical record of what revisions everything was everything was at when I made the release, um, there's a ver there's a a command in the tool that I use that makes a copy of this where every rever every revision of every repository is tracked. So and then whenever I um, make a release of um, this whole project, I'll update that file. In fact, I should have probably done that now. Uh, it would just be mugget release release. And there was a change, which means I messed up. Okay, well, that's that's because I flipped over to that to look at it. So that's not really a... I can ignore that one. Yeah, so that's uh, one thing you could do if you have multiple Git repositories. Make sure you track the revision of every repository um, when you make a release and you tag that file. It's all, I, I, I think that's a good strategy, Potato. Just uh, pull everyone about what they do and then pick what you like. Try out, try out what other people do and see if it works for you. Okay. How do I want to start this? I think what I want to do is in this stage where we do this load tile set. Will I know the size or I don't know the size here. I did have to know the size at one point. Where was that? Character panel? At some point, I had to figure out how many tiles there were, right? No, that's okay. I don't, I don't mind being off track. I feel like my brain isn't really in gear for that kind of question right now, though. So I feel like the, my answer wasn't that great. Uh, well, that's inventory slots. Um, was it profile panel? Oh, we have to know how many. Does the server tell us how many there are? Yeah, okay, so it's not there then. Tile sets panel, maybe. Tiles panel? I thought I called it tile sets panel. Oh, I did an on... What is this? On load. Right, so an on load, I can get the width... From that, and figure how many tiles there are. Okay, so this is going to be a problem, isn't it? I guess I can fudge it for now. Oh, wait, this tile set includes a uh, list of tiles doesn't it and then we can get its length uh let me let me look at this in here what happened can i work with a smaller window here let's see if i do an undocked view maybe and then redux and let's move off to a zone where it's quieter. So that this doesn't change so much. And let's look at the state. Uh, session. Tile sets. 
Right, so we can look at the length of the tiles. I think. We'll have to grandfather these in later. The tile set's tiles length will tell, tell me how many tiles there are. Okay, let's, let me see if I can do this. So we'll sabotage that. I forget. I uh, mark, bookmarked this for a reason. I think it was this one. Ah, uh, let's put that in this window over here. Hmm. Ah, uh, that's why that was showing up there. Okay. So it's lo uh, load atlas. I need to give it a name of some kind. I guess that's what this tile set key was for. And then this is the path to the um, ping. And then the JSON. So, yeah, I was reading about here that the, where does it say it? Down here? Meme clear bombs, how are you doing? I feel like AOL Instant Messenger was the first social platform that gave way to much larger ones we have now. I remember ICQ. Which came first, ICQ or AOL Instant Messenger? Well, before ICQ, I guess it would be um, IRC, right? ICQ and then AOL, yeah. AOL stole from ICQ? Probably. There was something in here. Oh, here we go. Instead of passing an URL for the Atlas JSON data, you can pass in a well-formed JSON object. That's what I was hoping to do here. So this, what are we calling this thing? This is the Atlas. So we'll have to make it. So uh, let Atlas. Does nice you have that default sound? Sound like high pitch. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Twitch chat is probably an IRC overlay. Well, Twitch chat is a is is a derivative of IRC, right? Twitch took stuff from IRC that worked and then added stuff that they wanted to they wanted to it. Hey there, Philip and and J, uh, Jnet nine. How are you guys doing? In the first week, learning how JavaScript works, and you search for a community about it, and everyone speaks in all kinds of weird abbreviations. You know that's probably true about anything technology wise, Philip. I remember when I joined the, my last job, for the first month, everyone was speaking in initialisms and acronyms that I didn't understand. And from then on, I would always bug people to tell me uh, what things stood for. Hey there, Toulouse. How are you doing? And congrats on the 500 followers, Toulouse. I missed your 12-hour stream. I was, I think I was driving at the time, driving back from vacation. I don't know if it's just people want to sound clever. I don't actually. I never really understood why people want to speak in those in in initialisms and acronyms, other than that they can. Like maybe you're right. Sound clever could be. I'm gonna try to fool Phaser into thinking I'm using a real um, software tool like Texture Packer when I'm really just making it off the f off the fly here. Problem is, I don't know if I need to follow that format or if I can follow this one. I think this was called a multi-atlas, and this maybe this is the one I want here. Let me just let me just try this one. So this would be frames.
Oh, I think I remember reading that this was a hash versus a, an array. And this one was the an array form. But I don't remember. You want to, be, want to be part of the tribe? Could be. Love to listen in the background? Yeah, a lot of people watch these streams for that. Hey there, Cthulhu. How are you doing? I was vacation? Yeah, I wasn't streaming most last week because I was on vacation for 4th of July stuff. And vacation was pretty good. We went somewhere to watch fireworks and we couldn't see the fireworks because <laughs> it was uh, obscured by a hill. It's like, ah. <laughs> Otherwise, we had fun. Yep, listening, listening to my awesome voice. It's like an announcer voice, maybe. Someone you would trust. Someone then to whom you would give all of your money. Uh, let's see. What if I just... This has to be another object, right? Let me just hard code the, the dang thing. We'll make this a um, zero. So I want to just see it working. See what it does. Uh, cheat and copy all this stuff. Yeah, we could hear the fireworks and we could see we could see it light up the sky and stuff, but we couldn't actually see the fireworks directly. Movie trailer voice. You think so? I don't know. Maybe we should do a weekly programming podcast. Well, I do a daily programming for real thing. <laughs> I, 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 my hands are full doing this uh, stream and the and the game I'm doing. Did you feel the earthquake? Not at all. I was too far away from it. There were two of them, right? I read that there was one, and then there was a couple of days later there was another one. Right, X, Y, width, and height. This, this is what I was getting at. X. Y. I want to play with these numbers here. Width is a tile size. Height is tile size. Okay. Okay, do I need I don't okay, I don't need all of these um and then is this just this repeated again? I think it is. Source size. It's it's all the same thing. Width. Tile size and height. Wait, why am I typing it when I can just copy? You felt it where you are? At your undisclosed underground bunker location? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in Southern California. I guess a lot of people in Southern California felt it, but for vacation, I was we went all the way up to Lake Tahoe, so did not feel it up there. Although, you know, we might have been on the road or something. I don't remember exactly when it was. It depends. Seven point one can be a big one, depending on the type of earthquake, right? And how deep it what how deep it is and and other factors. Well, I'm hearing a weird dog barking. And it's not our dog. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's not out of 100. It's like a logarithmic scale. So like a 7 is 10 times more powerful than a 6, right? A yeah, order of magnitude. Yep. Is it order of magnitude versus logarithmic? Or is that, are those that mean the same thing? I'm not, the, I'm not a math guy. Okay, if I do that... Gosh, I don't know if this is going to work. 
Just try and see. What's the worst that could happen? Oh no, that's the worst that can happen. So everything... It's interesting. These tiles... Oh, everything is an orc. Okay, so the way I wanted to play with this was um, move these a little bit. Like, what if I move that to 16? Aha. Uh -huh. So why do we have all these things repeated? Do I even need these? This uh, let's 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 move this to um, uh, one times that. All right. Actually, the vertical won't make sense. Okay. And what happens if I offset this? I don't even think these are used. What if I just remove these? Okay, it doesn't even need those. This is completely um, reverse engineering the thing. I'm seeing what I can get away with. Yeah, it doesn't need it. It doesn't need any of this stuff. So what, ultimately I just need frame? Huh, okay. We'll keep it simple then. Award myself, I, don't, I can't award myself points. <laughs> it, it, w when the earthquakes happened, I thought to myself, you know, I bet that 24-7 um, earthquake channel on science and tech is getting a lot of viewers right now. <laughs> oh, did I forget to update that? Cthulhu, you get a point for um, discovering that my uh, node is out is not up to date. Let me fix that. Uh, what window are we on? This one. Oh, snap. Still don't know why that happens sometimes. Let me temporarily obscure my overlay for a second. What am I working on today? is starting work on tile animations for his game. And then this is outdated. Here's the link. I knew I forgot something. I always forget something. There, fixed. Working on tile animations. Uh, whoops. Grab the wrong thing. Let's fix that again. All right. USGS is overwhelmed with traffic for a while. I would have just gone to the, since now that I know about it, the uh, the Twitch channel that's like Earthquake Map, 3D Earthquake Map 24-7. It, it gets a lot of views late at night. It's like near the top of science and tech. That and the pot growing streams and the and the live webcam of someone's chicken farm for some weird reason. Okay. So if I'm right, I can continue to use these numbers and just do that and basically rebuild. Yeah. Huh. Right, so if it's not in the tile set, it gets a zero. So, um... There was a trick to get all the... to get the numbers in, in, into a list, right? I did this in utilities. Uh, where was it? Was it range or something like that? That oh, search is going to take forever. Don't think it was range. Nope. 
thought I did it here, but I guess not. A way to get like the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, really quickly. I guess I can just do it uh, an old school way. Um, so um, for um, i equals zero, i is less than. Tile set tiles length plus plus i atlas dot frames I can just use i right because it will um I think it'll turn it into a string right and then just do this. And then make that i times. And then do that. i is not defined. i is not defined. Where? Oh, let. Oh, okay. I should only do this if it's defined. Okay, let's cheat then. We'll say if tile set tiles, then we'll do this stuff. Else we'll do it the old way, which is to treat it like a, a, spr a spr sprite sheet. Reload. Let I. Yeah, you got it. Oh. That looks interesting. That's not what I wanted. Oh, how did that turn get turned into is not a number? <laughs> Autocomplete, you foiled me. Wow, how did that happen? They're all marching. Oh, the width isn't right on something. Interesting. I'm guessing uh, these are no? What is that? Oh, it's this guy. There's an NPC. The NPC happens to be sit, standing there. Let me look at something here. What does the NPC tile set look like? Oh, okay. It's an array, but it has no length. So, okay, so it's out of range then. So uh, that's interesting. If if you pick an, one that's out of range, it just uses the entire atlas. Uh, well, like, to fix that, I, I can just um do this, right? Hit update. Ah, uh, that didn't do it. What if I do a 1 and then do a 0? Yep, and then it makes them all null except for the last one, and then when I reload it, that should fix it, right? Yep, okay. Cool. So if I wanted to, like, test some stuff out, I could do that, and it would really, it'll offset them more and more off. Yeah, okay, cool. So I can have fun with this. I can um, actually make the UI do glitchy stuff by playing with those numbers. All right. I'm not sure how I'm going to make the water scroll. Maybe I'll do that later. But 
I do want to play around with the animation stuff. Let me, let me. Th let me look into how I would do an uh, animated tile now. Let's close this. I have that bookmarked. That I didn't. Okay, it was just to get the atlas. I'm actually done with that. All right. So this is stuff I didn't research last night. So I'm gonna have to. I don't really like the documentation. I don't really like the examples either, because the examples don't explain things at all. They just show you the code. But I remember seeing something about there was an anim. Anims, here we go. Animation controller. Right, and you can do a play. Play is an animation on a game object that has, an, has the animation component, such as a sprite. Animations are stored in the animation manager. <sighs> Unique string-based key. I hate that. <laughs> I guess I do want to look at um, phaser IO examples. Was there... Okay, here's animation. Which one do I want? Create animation without frame names. There we go. Okay, so it's anims create, and then you give whatever you give for key is what you give play. Frames is an array. I guess these are the key frames. What is this key? That's the atlas to pick out of, right? And then frame name is. Wait a minute, what is, what the heck? Oh, it's getting the names of the frames from the texture atlas. Okay. Then how long is each frame? I guess I want to look at anims create then. Anims, which is the animation controller. Oh, there's no create though. Oh, is it? Hmm. Not anims on a sprite, it's anims on the scene. Okay, let's go to scene and oh, scene anims. Animation manager. Okay, getting getting somewhere here. Create. <sighs> okay. If you wish to reuse an existing key, or remove it first. Okay. And what is? Oh, I, I, it, it's all in this config then. Okay, so there's a default frame rate, 24. 
And if duration is not given, it's derived from, if not given, it's derived from frame rate. How is it derived from frame rate? Who knows? <laughs> Let me just play with one of these. So... Stage, scene, uh, anims, create, a key will be, we'll just build one from this. So this will be, um, dash anim, and then, uh, frames. Let's just have two frames. And then re what's this repeat minus one? Does that mean repeat forever? Infinity, okay. Okay, so the two frames will be um wait, wait, do they have to be keys? Okay. Let's alternate between zero and one. How am I gonna how do I do that? Each one has to have the key and the frame in it, okay? What did I do that? I just write it once and then copy, right? Key is this frame. Uh let's do zero. Let's, let's alternate, alternate between 0 and 1. And then I need to attach it to the sprite. Oh, no, it's, it's just I do dot play. Okay, so let me do this for uh, water tiles. So that would be where I create Hold on, let me think about this. What does this actually do? Takes a tile set ID and a version number. Okay. I do unload. I'm going to want to unload the... The anims too. I guess I'm okay leaking it for now. I'm really just hacking this in right now. Uh, where do we create a uh, sprite? Add sprite. New sprite. Where is this done? <laughs> Reflect sprite edit. Here it is. Let's just have them all do it. Sprite. Uh, Actually, it's it's this thing does the magic, right? It figures out the uh, tile set key. Let's just do it here. Sprite dot play. Uh, this thing. What does that do? <laughs> I just want to see what it does. That doesn't seem... Oh, no, get first tick of null. Okay, interesting. Did that only do that when I moved off out of the view? 
Or is it just do it always? Interesting. Hmm. I have to be smarter about this. That has to actually exist. Um, let's say... Let's have it... Let's just pick a specific tile. We'll hard-code it. So if it's tile set 47, tile 0. If tile set is 47 and tile is 0. I don't see him animating though. Oh, something broke there. Oh, it's only doing it when it's added, not when it's... Okay, so it's just broken completely. Hey there, 2 strike. When you're planning to re remove lag from the game. You see it's already a lot better than before? The lag might be better than it was before because they improved the performance of the back end. Um, there's different kinds of lag. If you mean like the... Um, Okay, it's hard to it's hard to see it here. Uh, in fact, that's going to be broken. Uh, let's go here. If you mean like this um, rubber, do you mean that rubber banding? That rubber banding is a specific issue with the camera and the rendering system. And my my son actually actually wanted me to fix that yesterday, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, I'll fix that in a little bit, and I didn't get to it. Is that is that what you mean by the lag? Or do you mean the um, time between when you hit a key and when you actually see it move? Delay between the key press and character movement? That is probably going to be harder to fix because then that lag is... Um, it could be one of two things. It could either be that it's using a TCP WebSocket connection or it could, it could be that it has to do a round trip with the uh, backend server cluster before it actually shows it. Um, if it's the former, then I need, probably need to look into uh, UDP instead of TCP. If it's the latter, then probably I need to do client-side prediction. And that's a little trickier because right now the client is only given the tiles that should show up. I would probably have to show, I'd have to have the server transmit more tiles than you can see so that the, the instant you step, it can actually show these tiles. Otherwise, it, um, you would see black bars as you move. And until the server fills in the missing information. So it's a little bit trickier. Probably won't get to it for a while. I think what I want to do is add in some game content first and then work on the lag at some later point. But if I get a lot of feedback that says, well, I don't like to play this game because of the lag, then that'll change my plans, I'm sure. Let's go invisible again. Wahaha. <laughs> Yeah, the lag is dependent on your distance from the uh, server I'm running on, which is in um, Amazon's cloud in uh, Oregon. Their server center in Oregon. So Western U.S. If you're far from the Western U.S., the lag is probably a lot worse. So this is the kind of lag that I see um, being in Southern California. I mean, it's not too bad. The rubber banding is a lot more noticeable than the input lag. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I need to get to that at some point. I don't know when I want to do it, though. Okay, so this... The frame is null. Um, let's open the, um, console when we do that. Uh, 
Undefined, undefined. That's not good. House that's 47. Wait a second. Oh, I have it wrong here. Um, that's that's what it is. I should just do this. Like that. Let's try again. Left, right. Texture is undefined. Frame is undefined. Huh. So start frame is zero. Okay. Oh, hey there, Chris. How are you doing? Mr. Sir? Chess seems to be very slow. Ah, from for my stream, it's so-so. Oh, uh, last week, it was really slow. I think, was it Tuesday, the last time I streamed? It was super slow. And I figure just everyone's on vacation. I don't know, how do you, how do you like the overlay, Mr. Sir? Looking good? Uh, we had uh, an awesome developer make it. <laughs> you might know him. <laughs> yeah, so this overlay is the work of Mr. Sir himself, CM Griffin. You should check out his stream where he's working on this chat overlay called Stream Parrot. And he's fixing all the bugs that we're finding. For example, one bug that... Um, I can't point to it because my camera doesn't reach. I'll use my mouse. Uh, this this chat message here shouldn't show up because I I have the bot on the ignore list, but he's but the bot's showing up anyway. So I'm sure Chris is hard at work fixing these things. Yeah, it's in alpha, so it's the bugs are to be expected. What what did I do here? It just can't load frame zero for some reason. Why is frame undefined at this point? There are two frames. Zero and one. Why is next frame... Okay, no, they're not undefined. The frame inside of animation frame is undefined, though. Oh, I'm getting confused. Frame is an animation frame. And, okay. Oh, yeah, and that's the one that's undefined. So why, why is that undefined? I guess I didn't create the animation correctly. Why is that undefined there? Texture, what's the difference between texture frame and frame? I don't know. Is this because I, it needs to be, I need to, it has to finish loading first and I didn't let it finish loading? Is that what's going on? Cat's yelling at me. Obviously, I did something to displease him. Frame name. Oh, what else, what else can I learn from this? This animation frame.
So they just set key and frame. Key and frame. I mean, do these need to be numbers? Just guessing now. I don't like guessing. Yeah, it didn't work. Hmm. Frame rate 24 duration that. I don't know what I'm missing. I guess I should look at the documentation for this crate again. Okay, so I did frames. That's an array of these, which have key and frame in it. What am I missing? I like how it's not even documented. <laughs> Description. <laughs> Description. It's almost, almost as good as my documentation. Um, mm. I don't know. Phaser. Um, animation. Frame undefined. Sounds like me. Try moving the animation creation into create. What? What do they do that I'm not doing? Because where am I doing this? I'm doing this way later. Is that what's going on? It like, oh, it should uh, no, it should be fine. <sighs> Create. Okay, that's not helping. Yeah. Not helping. No, I don't want to do with texture packer. Wait a minute. I have to add it to the game? Hmm. 
If I can't figure this out in the next five, ten minutes, I'll just move on and look at this later. Do I need to do this? It's like, there's no documentation about what this does. Okay, maybe another example would help. This doesn't ever, this doesn't call anything else. It's doing exactly what I'm doing. Anims create, and then play it. So why does this work? The only thing I can think of is this JSON has something in it that I don't know that I need. Don't know. Okay, let's look something else here. And JSON? That doesn't help. It doesn't show me what the JSON is. I'm wondering if I need to do this generate frame numbers. What does generate frame numbers do? I don't know. I guess I can just try it out. So instead of hard hand coding this, I would do a anims generate frame numbers. Okay, let's let's keep this commented out. Instead, I'll do um, stage scene uh, anims generate frame numbers, and then this is the uh, key that I want. Uh, Wait a minute. That's the key for the animation. That's okay. That's the key for the um, tile set. And then there's a start end first. Let's try that out. Try it out. Nope, still undefined. Okay. Animation frame is undefined. Oh, hello there, Mr. Silverfish. Where did, where did you just go? There's a huge silverfish run across my desk. And now he's gone. Bugs. I have bugs in my code and bugs in real life, apparently. Okay, that didn't work. frames generate 
frame numbers. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, there's 715209. Mr. Silverfish was a silverfish. You know what a silverfish is, right? One of those little bugs that you find in corners of your house. I, I just don't like these examples because they don't explain anything. They just show you the code. And you're supposed to just figure out what they're giant, trying to do from this. Maybe I, I'm missing this end frame. This might only work with a sprite sheet. I'm not using a sprite sheet, right? I'm using an atlas. Maybe I need a animation from atlas. Texture atlas animation. Here we go. Frame names. Let's do this. I think that the um, secret might be in this JSON. Let me look at it. Uh, sea creatures JSON. What does that look like? Uh, where is the damn thing? It's in assets animations. Okay. <sighs> assets animations. Secret just JSON. I don't understand what you're saying, meme clear bombs. <laughs> Okay, it has string followed by a number. Is that what's going on here? Okay, what do I have? I just have frame. I'm thinking all this is just redundant. Mm, okay. Oh, you've never seen a silverfish? Uh, how do I do this? It might be a disturbing image. Yeah, okay, so people who don't like bugs, but you can you just Google search silverfish. That's what I just saw crawling across my table. You see them, in, I fi we find them in cupboards, you know, on the, on the ground. They, they're just kind of bug that you kind of have to live with kill them whenever you see them and that kind of thing. You can set traps for them and I don't know. Just like ants, I guess. You'll you'll never get rid of all of them. All right, what am I I think this is just do, just doing what this did, only I didn't even didn't even work correctly. Um Let's go back to using this. Try to figure out what I did wrong here. I suppose we can step through uh, this code here. And what if I do debugger? 
here. And then uh, step in is uh, F11, right? Okay. New animation. I think I want to step into that, right? I don't know. What is this event emitter called? I don't know what this is. Okay, here we go. Get frames. Texture manager, get value frames, default. I don't know what this is doing. Extract all frame data into the frames array. And the key is frames, so it's this. Correct. So this frames is just what I told it. Oh, wait a minute. What did it do? I'm already past. Okay, I need to restart. Uh, go. Let's go into here again. I'm stepping way over it. Try it again. Like I have to step through this event emitter. Here we go. In here. Then in again. Okay, what's the key this time? Default texture key. Get frames, here we go. What is frames? It's an array. It's not a string. Okay, and then it's going to look up key. And then frame is zero. Okay, is that the problem? It's not getting that. Is it because it's a number and not a... Um, uh, what was it? Actually, I did use... Is it because it needs to be a string? Let me see. Let me put a breakpoint there and hit go again. And let's go step into that. List key. Hold on, what's this list? Hold on. The only thing in the list is avatars and background. Here are the frames in it. Okay, so the key is the wrong key. That's the that's what's wrong here. Wait a minute, why, why is it, I thought it would be tile set key. Why is this showing avatars and background? What is this again? Texture manager, texture manager. So I thought whenever I load
How did, excuse me. Hey there, Clayman. I'm a little confused, Clayman, but I think I'm, 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 I'm getting an understanding of how Phaser is organizing its textures and animations by reverse engineering Phaser because their documentation sucks. <laughs> Don't be confused. I'm wondering how the, the words avatars and background got in here because I thought I was on, I'd switched. Whoops, how did that happen? I thought I had switched to using these um, tile set keys, which is ID dash version. So how did it, how is it getting these actual names of avatars and background in there? Google runs two years worth of E to E tests every day. Huh. Reverse engineering lives is your favorite. <laughs> Maybe they're not so prevalent in your part of the world, Void Comp. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, we in Southern California we get ants and silverfish. And if you don't keep your house clean, you get cockroaches too. But I haven't seen a cockroach in my area in years. Although when I was on the the road trip this weekend, I saw cockroaches outside of a gas station. My wife uh was like, Ugh. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'll, I'll step on them if they get too close. Yeah, well, the documentation leaves a lot to be... If, if I could, I would just... But here's the documentation. I mean, there, there literally is like no explanation about what this is. I mean, it says this, but it doesn't really go into a whole lot of detail. They say you need, you need this config. So look at the config. It just says this. And like... Look, look at this. No, the description is description. So it leaves me like, and I have, there's both a frame and then there's a hidden thing called a texture frame. And the f texture frame ends up getting what I, what I tell it for frame. And then the, what really is frame is undefined, which is leading to an error. So I'm trying to figure it out. What did I do wrong? And this is just really weird that these keys show up like that. How would that work? It would have loaded... Where would the word background come from? I guess if it took the path and stripped off the .png and the leading slash, it, it would have gotten background and avatars. Is that what I want? So I need to actually put... Tileset.asset here? That's weird. But without the .png part. Yeah, that's correct. What does avatars have in it? Yeah. Okay. Um. So this, I need to get the key of the texture somehow. Maybe that's why everyone in those other examples was using this um, generate frame names. So what does that exactly do? String to append to every resulting frame name. Like, I don't understand this. So I need to look up the texture manager, maybe. <sighs> I don't know. Did you like get key or something?
Okay, because the way I'm loading it is I'm I'm constructing this weird this key. Okay, let, let's see what that's the load. What is that? Um, the load loader loader plugin. I think it has a uh, Atlas as a member. This one add the JSON based texture atlas to the current load queue. The key is a unique string is used to add the file to the global texture manager on the successful load. The key should be unique both in terms of files being loaded and files already present. Loading a file using a key that has already taken the result in a warning. So that's why I decided to make the key based on the ID of the tile set and the version. But what ends up happening, I think, is it's using the URL of the texture and using that as a key somewhere else. Right? Because this list has, it's expecting to find, I guess, uh, where it's background, right? Because the key, I don't know, 2067 was not background. That was something else. I forget which one 26, 2067 was. Probably avatars, right? Yeah, it's getting it directly from what I passed in. Just hack it and say background. I hate doing this. Then just do it. See what we get. Oh, there's a debugger in there. I mean, it loaded. It's it's not animating. <sighs> Probably because the um, duration and all that stuff was not set, right? I don't see anywhere where the durations are set. Very frustrating. Durations must, these are just coord texture coordinates. Nowhere here is a, is there a duration? So how does this actually work? Obviously it works, because they're animating. Let me try putting these back in. I'm expecting that these tiles added here will alternate between the water and the grass because those are the first um, two tiles in the background. Uh, tile set or background texture, right? Um, where was...
was I? There's duration in the animation frame. Maybe that's what I need. Let's let's add let's add duration here. I have no what, idea what the units are because it doesn't say. Um How about one? Uh, let's remove the debugger. I don't know what it's doing. Uh, okay. Hold on, maybe the play isn't actually working. I keep dragging this window too. It's bugging me. Play. Wait a minute, did I get rid of the play? Did I never call a play? I did do the play. How come it's not matching that? Okay, there it is. Let me step through that and see what's going on. Start animation. Look at this animation. Duration, 12,000. Frame rate, 24. Frames. I wonder if it's in milliseconds. So this needs to be like 1,000 instead of uh, 1. milliseconds per frame. I mean, that's awful fast, right? Why would they have milliseconds per frame? It's just those two things called frame, because this has a frame duration. Okay, it looks like it's in milliseconds. So, let's make it 1,000. Nope, they're not animating. What the heck? <sighs> Let's try not putting these in quotes, maybe. One day I'll get this to work. <laughs> Oh, it's set to regular expression. That's why I wasn't finding it before. Um, you know, the other thing I can do is uh, set sprite texture. It's called from what? Added. Updated. Okay, but yeah, we're on reflect sprites, what does it do? It does this.
Okay, I don't understand why why was it why are we not getting there on this initial sprite load? How come it's only until we get here do we get it? Is it because this is not Oh The it the avid the sprites are being given before the tile set is loaded. That's probably that's why. That's that's another issue. Anyway. So let me see if I can learn something else here. Start animation. Maybe frame, the second frame is not right. What if the two frames are the same by accident? X, okay, here's, let me look at the data for frame two. Oh, they are the same. It's loading the first frame for both. Well, why is it doing that? Okay, so let's get rid of that debugger. Create. So it's it's here somewhere, I think. Hey there, Frosty. I'm struggling with the uh, phaser right now. I'm trying to figure out how this um, anim's crate actually works. Step out in. Okay, here's create. New animation. Oh, did I already step too far? I already stepped too far. Yeah, because I think the problem is this one, um, it's seeing the same, it's, 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 it's picking zero, zero for both of them. Cut zero, zero. Unless I'm not understanding this correctly. Sprite source zero, zero, zero. It shouldn't be zero for the second frame. It should be um, one over. Hey there, Jamaica. You guys can watch me struggle with the uh, phaser today. <laughs> let's let's step into this. Maybe it's probably in here somewhere. I'm doing something wrong. Key is frame. So step again. What's the key this time? Default texture key. There we go, get frames. Okay. So frame is zero for this one. I wanna to go to the next loop really. Okay, so here's the second frame. I is one. So it might be in here. Uh, let's go and step into here. List. All right, so the key, this is where I had to hard code. I don't know how to get, why it's using that as the key. For some reason it thinks that it should use the file name as the key, or the base of the file name. Anyway, whoa, how do we get here? It's just one. How does, how did it go from one to
to that thing. Well, they may need to step. Yeah, why is it? Where did it get frame from? Oh, this frame and texture frame. Oh, I, I see. I see, I see, I see. You'll have to guess it from your hints. Okay. Let's just try to guess where your job will be from the hints. Is this like um, seven questions and that we should, we should know exactly what it is? They use the Cyrillic alphabet. Are you working for um, Eve? Eve Online? Because they're having problems. Maybe they could use you. Cyrillic, though. Yeah, my my wild guess would be uh whatever whatever that company is that makes Eve online. Oh, they're in Iceland? No. Oh. Then I have no clue. What Russian game company? I like the one that made um can't remember the name. Metro? Okay, already this Frame is not correct, so what order to get the texture frame? Oh, so this is the one that was already incorrect. Because this is not right. Well, name is one. This is not correct. Okay, so here's the line that I need to to get down to. Go again. Okay, frame one. Let's step into this. Okay. So that has a getter. I guess, yeah. So I need to step and then the name. Okay, here we go. Frames. Well, that's weird. There's no zero. It starts at one. Why would it not start at zero? Is that the problem? It's a starting at one instead of zero. Because here's the here. That's the correct. So I'm off by one somehow. Hey, who's that? Tua Bud. Thank you for the sub. I'm sorry that the uh, overlay is was obscuring it, but thank you for your support. Five months. Wow. Have I been doing this game stuff for five months? I'm doing it longer than five months, but it sure doesn't seem that long. Why is this not starting at zero? Did I mess up here and um, construct it wrong? It should have been from zero. Huh. Okay. Maybe that's the problem. So let me hack this to start to do one, two. and see what I get. Let me remove the debugger. And how do I remove all breakpoints? How do I see breakpoints? I guess... It's not a DOM breakpoint. Oh, here we go. How do I delete them? Remove all breakpoints. There we go. Hold on, I missed some of the hints. Southern, southeastern Europe. It's a capital with a female name, Sophia. The Bulgaria. I have no idea what it is, Jamaica. Oh, there, there we go. There's there, there's our animation. Oh, and they're all out of sync. Well, that's gonna be interesting. How do I get them in sync? I'm, I'm starting to think I wanna, I'm gonna wanna do the animation myself. Because there are several problems here. One is that for some reason this, this started at one and not zero. 
even though I used I starting at zero. At least I think I did. Let me do a debugger here. Maybe I got the atlas wrong. Atlas frames. Yeah, it starts at zero. So somehow it gets turned into one to eight instead of zero to seven. The other problem is I had to know the internal key of the texture. I don't like that. I think I'm just going to abandon this whole animation system and do it myself. Easier than you thought? I can't tell from the picture. I don't know. How did you spoil it? I I when I saw Sophia, when you said Sophia, I'm I I'm like I think pretty sure that's Bulgaria. Are you saying um no? So Jill Mega, you said Sophia. Because uh, Weldchen guessed it. Look at the logos on the building. Okay. Let's look at the logos on the building. Hmm. How do I zoom in more? Oh, is it Google? <laughs> Copyright 2016 Google, that picture. Hmm. I don't know. Hey, hey there, Adam. How are you doing? We're trying to guess the company Jelmega just joined, and I, I, I can't, I can't figure it out. Anyway, I'm reverse engineering Phaser right now and realizing that I don't like their animation system at all, and I'm gonna have to do it myself. <laughs> I'll show you what I managed to get working right now. I have some test animation here. Um, they're all out of sync because you can't tell Phaser to start animations by absolute time. You just tell, you just say play. And you have to know the internal texture key, which I don't hate that. And then they're not, they're not zero based, they're one based. There's like three or four different problems I'm having with trying to figure out how to do these animations on top of the fact that the documentation is sort of not done and so I can't figure it out. But how is your stream, Adam? Oh yeah, and this uh, overlay here, we're alpha testing a CM Griffin's uh, stream parrot overlay. We're replacing the uh, stream elements overlay. And it's not Comic Sans, it's Drama Sans. <laughs> It's Comic Sans with uh, ligature, so if you do, uh, you can do fancy things like, like that. See, there's a a arrow B instead of a minus greater than B. Please, no Comic Sans. Well, we have to uh, because that's uh, Chris is the author of that overlay, and that's his favorite font. It's not that bad, is it? Hey there, how's it going? Yeah, the animation stuff is a real pain. I think I'm just gonna do it myself. Your stream went well though, working on challenge mode again. Nice. I missed your streams last week, like Wednesday, Friday, being out out of contact of everything. So last I was um looking at your stream you were working on um trying to figure out the the GPU memory usage stuff. Okay, so people who have joined, I haven't given a proper intro. So I'm working on this game called Omni Arena. It's um Inspired by the old Ultima games, so it's top-down um, 2D pixel art tiles, and here we see the game world where they're just random NPCs walking around. And let's see if I can join in the game here. Oh no, I have it closed. I'll have to go back to my own game. Oh, it remembered who I am. Here I am in the game. Uh, I have some prototype items like these swords, uh, prototype NPCs. If I go here and step on an NPC. Um, it used, it broke, the sword broke, but it uh, destroyed the NPC there. I have a little test island over here where these swords spawn. I can go here and pick them up. 
so this is a multiplayer game. The game is hosted on Amazon Web Services, run running in C++, and the front end is all in Phaser for the graphics and then React for the UI around it, and I use Redux for state management. So working on things like here, there's teleporters. Here's, an, here's a tiger named Bill. I can talk to him. I can say, oh, he moved. Don't move. I can say, what's your name? I'm Bill. Bill, that's my name. Good job. He says, I eat unwary adventurers. Not you, of course. Say, Tiger, I will very observant of you. Say, bye. So you, there's a basic um, dialogue system and teleporters. And um, I'm, I'm building this up piece by piece on stream. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, um, today I'm trying to work on animating the tiles. So right now, nothing animates. Everything is static, and I'm trying to get it to where, like in the old Ultima games, the uh, water would scroll, and the um, and the characters would alternate between um, two different frames of animation, and some of the older Ultima games had more elaborate animation. I'm just trying to get some kind of animation done today. Yeah, the chat is uh, wired into the game too. So if you're a, a VIP or above, it shows in-game. If the chat is enabled so all of my commands are routed through my game and are um yeah one of the things about my stream is to try to integrate my game into twitch so that um you can score points by helping me out in stream and later cash out those points in game for for stuff I don't know, my overlay is blocking that. You can see there. So we have um, some people help out a lot in stream. They get a lot of points. I don't know what we'll use the points for later. Maybe you get gold in game or special items or something like that. And now my printer, has, my printer has, has decided to make a lot of noise for me. VAP only? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I have a talking tiger in the game. Yeah, so for example, the dialogue system in the game looks like this. This is what he says when you first greet him, and then you go into the conversation state. And these are the things you can ask him about. You can say, what's your name? I'm Bill. What's your job? I'm a, I eat adven adventures. And I uh, built this up last week and the week before. And uh, I've been working also on scripts. So... There aren't in any in, in the real game, but in the off in the uh, test environment, here's an example script that um, just sends a, a chat message, and then um, there are a couple other scripts up here. This one will create a sword in the game. So the game uses an entity con component system. So we create an entity that has three components: a position an item component and a tile and that causes this to happen if i walk over onto that square a sword pops into existence although there's because i'm playing around with the graphics the sword looks like a sword with gold and a piece of chicken next to it <laughs> please, please explain what does this mean c++ react redux so the back end of the game is in c++ and the um user interface on the front end is in React, and Redux is how all the state of that front end is stored. So those are the three different frameworks that I'm primarily using. Although I, I, I'm now using Lua too, so I should probably add Lua to that list. Yeah. Yeah, so this is an interesting graphics glitch because of the way I'm playing around with the uh, phaser stuff. I'm trying to get the animation stuff to work. So now all of these tiles are animating. I set it up so all while all water tiles alternate between water and grass. And yeah, I just don't like it. it. There's no way to synchronize them. And the thing is a mess. So I think I'm just going to remove this now. We're just going to remove all the animation stuff. I did get the tile atlas to work. So I don't need to use a sprite sheet anymore. I can, I can I have more control over the texture coordinates of individual um, tiles. So I like that. Let's remove this animation thing. And to fix that um, item over there, I have to do one more thing, which is in the tile set for items, I don't think I have these set up right. I have to hit like that and then put it back to zero. 
And then this should fix that. Yeah, so now it's just a sword. Let's go pick it up. And then stand over here. It's like an infinite sword generator. Or now I'm fully armed with four swords. Do you use a specific framework on the back end? No, I mostly wrote it myself. So there are a lot of um, custom made components. So I made my own um, implementations for hash functions and web server and client stuff. Uh, server, client, deflate, yeah, all, all the stuff you'd expect for a web server. Um, I have my own wrapper for JSON objects, uh, which is kind of like nLomans JSON. So it's just a C++ wrapper for, for all the different things you can put into JSON. And I just, I've built these, this stuff up over the last however many months, nine months that it's been. Uh, I implemented um, the Raft algorithm, which is for consensus. So that on the back end, there are actually um, three servers. And one, one of them is actually running the game, and the other two are just making copies of all the game state. So that if, if this server dies, one of these other two will immediately take over, and the game continues, and you won't really see that much downtime. Been nine months already, I know. Mernin, Krasner, how are you doing? Mernin. Well, thanks, Ultramark. I also have a, a series I've started in YouTube, like 15 minutes a month, to show you how this game was made from the ground up. It doesn't show all the work that went in before the game launched, but um, you can see the progress and what the game has looked like over the last two months if you watch those videos. Um, it's been a while since I've actually added any game content. I'm mostly working on the mechanical things I need as a game master to create dialogues, to, um, to create and um, edit the Lewis scripts that will um, handle game events, that kind of thing. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, my stream overlays are now overlapping my um, chat overlay. I'm trying this, this chat overlay is new, so it, it, there's some rough edges there I need to need to fix uh what was i going to look up here i don't know i was uh, um little, got a little distracted oh we were talking about the uh how the back end framework yeah it's, it's all custom made stuff so it's all in my notes too if you're interested it's all in one note so the uh overall architecture of the game is described i think in notes yeah so this is the backend server's arch architecture, so it's all talking to the clients through um, a WebSocket interface. And there's a message um, dispatcher, I guess you'd call it, called the coordinator. And then there's the entity component system deep inside, and then there's an executor which changes the components and then runs... Um, the coordinator also runs... It's not shown here, but the coordinator also runs the game system, and that feeds back... So there's like a feedback loop between the coordinator um, dispatching messages from the ECS and then anything that needs to change goes through the executor and this raft sy system to, to replicate the state across servers using a, a journal to make sure that we don't lose any information. So um, built this up over time. I need to put more into this picture, but it's just showing that there are multiple servers and you can connect, connect to any one of them and they talk to each other behind the scenes replicating state. Yep, but today I'm working on trying to animate my uh, graphical tiles. So yeah, I fixed that, right? So this should be painting correctly now. All these weird squares are just um, visual cues for where I've put special things. So this is the uh, s the trigger that causes this script to be run. And this one down here is a teleporter. Actually, no, that one just prints a message. This one up here is a teleporter. Transports you to a different part of the map. And then this one right here is uh, triggers a dialogue, which is um, this sign. It just, it just says this way to the island of the epic unknown if you step over here. And um, this one there is a two-step dialogue that has, um, it says something and then pause and then says something else. So those visual markers are just there so that I know that 
if I were to step there, something happens, right? Okay. What to do about the animation stuff? I have a, there's a game tick that happens, right? Update? Where is it? When we launch, when we create phaser, there's like a callback we get. Uh, phaser update. Right, so that that's where there's where I'm rotating these squares. So here might be a good time, a good place to do the animation, right? So what if I just played around with this? What if I just went through all sprites and any water tiles I'll turn into something else? How would I know that it's water? Uh, reflect sprite added. It knows what the tile and the tile sets are, right? I just call set texture, don't I? Okay, I think I know what to do. Just to play around with this, I can loop through all tiles, right? Um, sprites, I mean. Sprites. Something like that. Go down to where that was, that update. Where is the update? Ah, uh, here we go. Let's say every half second, so... Let's remember what the last time was. Uh, by making a variable here. Um, last animation time. Zero. Uh, const. Uh, I don't know what to... Yeah, I constantly tell myself cl that claim in. That way, when I figure out what to do, if I actually do something, or if I actually do something, then I feel better. I'm like, oh, I didn't expect I'd be able to do it. <laughs> I think I know what to do, but I don't. When I get it done, though, I'm happy. This time is in milliseconds, I think. So, let's do animation time. Is time divided by five th 500, right? And we'll say if animation time is not equal to last animation time, then we'll update this to be equal to that. And let me go um, find that again, sprites. Yeah, this thing. So for each, what do I need? I need the sprite and I need the tile, don't I? And I need the tile set. Do I need ID? Don't think I do. So I can just remove that, right? If this is going to be a total hack, I think it was tile set. 47 for the background, right? Yeah. If it's tile set 47 and the tile is 0, then um, I'm going to take the animation time, mo um, mod it with a 2, and say if that's 0. Actually, I'm just going to take that and... Um, I'm going to actually use that for setting the texture. Set texture, this thing. Sprite set texture, let's just, what happens if I just put that in right there? Is it not TS? Oh, there was this hack. Um, I don't, I can just use TS. All right, let's see what that does.
It didn't work. <laughs> it's possible this isn't actually doing anything. Let's put a breakpoint here. Wouldn't that better do the same? Wait, a minute, wouldn't that be better? Wouldn't that better to do the same loop? Hold on, I'm trying to understand what you said. Time n rather than two n. I'm trying to like have it run every half second. If that makes sense, maybe I, maybe I have it wrong though. Uh, Oh, you know what? It needs to be an integer, not, um, what's time? That's milliseconds, right? Yeah, I need to, I need to make that an integer. How was that? How do you do that again? That, um, Lua has the double slash, right? And here it would be what, floor or int? Nope, uh, floor, right? Or math.floor. Math.floor. But anyway, uh, that's probably not what's happening. Let's see what's, what we get here. Does it ever get to there? That debugger's in my way. Stage tiles is empty. Okay. Yeah, because it's running way too much. What if I put a debugger in here? Undefined. Ah, so is it ever getting to there? And I, this will be a pain. I wish I could turn off hard-coded debugger statements. Okay, it's never getting in there, so what, this is not working. Tile set. Oh, it's not zero, it's one. Oh, that's right. I made zero reserved tile num in index. Like, well, it's still not working, though. Maybe I'm not, not sh maybe I'm not saving that. Um, let's see. Reflect sprite added. What do I store? Oh, it's tiles. It is the whole full name tile set, not TS. All right. Uh, there. Oh, it actually might work now. Um, I need to remove that debugger. Let's see if this Rymu animation system works. Okay. That didn't quite work the way I expected. <laughs> um... Oh, I need to add one, don't I? Oh, it should, it should have, it should have at least shown something there. Is this not working the way I expect? Let's put a debugger there. Right, so let me test some basic stuff. It should alternate between 0 and 1, and so this should be alternating between 1 and 2. Hmm. Tile set's 47. Oh, wait a minute, that's not right. I need to look it up. Shoot. 
It's got to use a tile set key. Actually, I think I just want to do this. I want to do set sprite texture. Yes. And then this, let's just compute that out here. So const tile, well, animated tile, or tile frame maybe. And we'll use tile frame here. Oops. And this is a tile set. Why are those equals two symbols weird? I'm using font ligatures, so that you turn on here. So if I um, set that to false, it, it's going to go back to triple equal. But uh, set to true, it combines them to look more mathematical. How's the performance going to be if you need to animate every tile from the CPU? Well, it's um, really just sending a different... Um, uh, what is it? It's going to end up sending a different um, uniform to the GPU. I don't think it will um, be har hardly any hit at all. It, because um, it's it's already loaded in the GPU. It's just setting a different um, index. You can deactivate even hardcoded debugger statements temporarily with that button. Oh, really? Oh, that, that works? Okay. I didn't know that. Thanks, Adam. Hey there, Sparrows. How are you doing? I'm struggling with Phaser today. And this was at a break point. Reload. Oh, there we go. There's the Rymu animation system and we're in action. Now, can I look at the performance of this? on and off how would i do this performance so we can see if that has any effect on performance right thanks for the follow by the way i guess we're hitting that button so we're profiling now i don't know how long to profile for let's do 10 seconds I'm not sure, actually sure how to look at this thing. I guess it's the summary that I care about the most. So most of the time it was idle. So let me take a snapshot of this, because really I only care about this number here. And let me put that somewhere. And now I'm going to go turn off this animation stuff like this and run it again okay i guess we're clearing right okay and then we're running it again Ubisoft. Nice. I didn't know they were based in Bulgaria. Okay, so we're comparing that with this, right? I would say it has absolutely no impact on performance because they're, they're I wish it would show me a percentage but it looks awfully the same. <laughs> so I'm going to say it has absolutely no effect on performance. To do the... Um, set, uh, changing the texture every half second. Just want to see CPU usage. You can use the performance monitor at the bottom half. Three dots, okay. Bottom half of DevTools. 
There's a lot of things. I'm not sure what you want me to exactly look at. Three dots near the console. Oh, right down here. Right here. Aha. Okay. Better. Thank you. That was HMAC. HMAC. Thank you very much. All right. So it's, you know, bouncing around 7 to 8%, right? This doesn't happen to have GPU usage, does it? No. If only, right, Adam? If only it had GPU usage. Right, Moose Creed? <laughs> Realistic programmer parkour physics sure he jumps on something and falls off relatively quickly. <laughs> Don't know if Phaser implements sprite batching, but binding textures is the only way the performance would take a hit. Yeah, so it's really, it's only one texture, and we're just changing the texture coordinates every half second. Yeah, I don't, I don't expect there to be a change, but let's put that back in there and see. I mean, it's still bouncing around 7 to 8%, right? So I don't think, yeah. I think we're good. But I like that performance monitor thing. All right. Oh, I just saw something funny there. Oh, when it gets added, it's not in the right, correct phase. Okay, so when I when I do this set, I'll probably what I'll do is in this set sprite texture, I'll do the calculating which frame we should be showing, right? Okay, so I need more of the back end stuff here to go any further, I think. Oh, congratulations, Jelmega. That sounds awesome. Working for Ubisoft. All right. So I think I'm done for the moment playing around with Phaser and decided I'm going to do my own animation system just by setting, doing the sets. Uh, set texture with a different tile index. I'll just have to have all my frames set up beforehand, which I had down here now. So I'm gonna. This is hard coded for now, but I want to change it so that I can set the um, the coordinates myself in the user interface. So this is a summary of what I'm going to add to the tiles objects, adding a new frames which is an array that has these things in it. So the tile set panels where all this stuff will be controlled from, and I wanted to move, right, I wanted to move this stuff over to here, I think. Is that what I said? Yeah. Not all of this, just this, just this part here, over to here. So we're going to split up this panel into two pieces. I did this before here, I think. Yeah, I had two panels. So let me see what I did there. Views, activities, panels. Actually, that just ends up opening this right here. Thanks for the follow, by the way. This ugly mess here. What did this ugly mess look like? There's a details, details left and the details right. So let me pin that, because I want the tiles panel to look have the similar structure. Wait a minute, I meant, why does this say dialogue name? Oh, because we're looking at the dialogue. Yeah, I'm just dumb. That's this thing up here, right? Right, which isn't part of that, so I'm ignoring that. Let's ignore that one. So right below this title bar, because it had buttons associated, but here's essentially the title bar. Underneath 
that are these two areas. And inside that, I put the shrinking container. Okay, so really, I want it to be like this. Class name, uh, tiles, panel, left. Or Why is there an overall div? I forget why. Let me look. Details. Because it was a row flex container. Yeah, that was important. Uh, details. Tiles panel details left and right. And then this goes into that other one. All of this stuff. Mm. This is all formatted weird. Undo. Looks like it needs to be tab two over. And then, okay, I see what happened. And then this line gets out then at once. Okay. Took you a, a year to get the job. Wow. Let's see if that won't work until I actually have the CSS for these. Let me just steal them from here. Why do it yourself? Why, why do it from scratch when you can steal? <laughs> Tiles panel. Oh, how does that look like? That already loaded. I guess it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it didn't break it. It's still sizing it right. Now to move this over, that's um, this part? No, part of that. I don't know why I put all this into the form, but really it's only some of this stuff. This part of it. Okay, so I'm going to take this part of the, well, this whole thing. Let's just take this whole thing and we'll copy it. And let's just see what I get. Okay, cool. So I have two copies of it. That horizontal rule is broken. Ah, uh, that's right. I remember how I did this. It had to have this thing in it. Um, so this is uh, goes there, and that moves down. Fixed horizontal rule. Okay, and from here I want to remove some of this stuff. Whoops, I'm jumping around everywhere. I don't want the horizontal rule, and I don't want, inside the form, I don't want this div or that image. Okay, and then I can remove that, remove the, remove this part from here, along with the update button. That's what I want. So this stuff goes. So it doesn't need to be in a form anymore. It's just like that. That got scrunched down there. Do I care? I guess I care a little bit. Um, how do I fix that? That's this div, right? Give it some space. I guess we'll just give it a formal class name. Mm. Tiles panel uh, texture. Yeah. Mm. 
margin of top 10 pixels. Oh, wait. Actually, no, this is what that was for. Okay, forget it. I don't need a class there. I remember why I did that now. This just has... Wait a second. Details left, yes. Hold on, where's this used here? It's there. Right there, okay. Yeah, because it used to be in there. Okay, I got it. Um, details left. Cool, now that spacing is correct. This I could do with some space. So margin left 20 pixels or something. All right. So the reason I did that is I want to have more, I want to use this section here for, uh, when I select a tile, I want to see a list of the frames and then be able to add and edit and modify each of the frames. So, um, and then right now it's hard coded to divvy up the texture this way, but instead I want to have it like not, maybe not do that by default. And instead of showing it like this, show it as a table. So I guess that's what I'm doing next. I'm making this into a table of rows instead of a, what is this right now, a, a grid of some kind? What is this, just a bunch of divs? Tile set tiles? Tile set, which I don't even have a, a rule for, so I don't need this. Okay, enjoy your work, Adam. See you tomorrow. What point does the hybrid model versus native on mobile become a performance issue? Mm, I don't know. Where you have bottlenecks, I guess. If, or if you have like inefficient transitions between you know, different parts of your model. All right. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. It's this. I'm looking for that. Where is that? Did I define that somewhere else? I did. Why did I put it? Oh, because I reused that elsewhere. Yeah, so this is a flex container set to wrap at 480 pixels. Yeah, okay. So we're not going to use that anymore, right? I'm just going to make this into a table of some kind. You don't like the, um, okay, let's try to customize the chat. The emotes are too big. You don't like the Comic Sans, okay. Is it that it's bright white? Is it, is it the contrast that's annoying? Let, let's see if, if I just disable the um, custom font face for a second. What do you think? Is, let's see if it's the Comic Sans that's the problem. You think the emotes are big? The emote sizes, I would have to have Chris add that um, adjustment to it. So this is without the drama sans. This is what whatever I had set up in the um Oh, it's open sans right now. Why not fear code? I can see if fear code's available. There's fear of sans, fear of mono. Let's try that. 
try Fear of Sands. I don't know how long it takes for the font to update, but I set it to Fear of Sands. How are you getting on with Chris's software? Um, okay. There we go. It just switched to Fear of Sands. Uh, let's compare that to Fear of... There's no Fear of Code, but there's Fear of Mono. We could try. See what that looks like. It's taken, it takes a little bit for the font to change, doesn't it? So, Chris, you're here. So, um, anything we can do about the emote sizes? I guess they're showing up a little bit big. I mean, they're not much bigger than what it looks like for me with Yada. A uh, 30 seconds ish timer. Did I, did it, did it change? I thought I changed it to, uh, Fira Mono. I didn't see it update. Oh, is it because Comic Sans was bigger? Cause it, it could have just been the font size. Okay, no, there, there it switched. Now we're on Fira Mono. That one, there's something weird going on with the um, wrapping. There you go, Chris. There's an interesting one. So it's like the um, stream, t the, the streamer's name and the badges are occupying two rows somehow, and it's not wrapping till it gets past that. Huh. I guess we'll go back to. Um, Fira Sands? It's the name? Okay. The name is too big. Huh. Yeah. Okay, well, it, it should kick it back in 30 seconds-ish back to Fira... There it goes. Oh, it's still wrapping there. Huh. Is that the font size? Let's go back to Open Sans. Oh wait a minute, no, it's not the. Oh, hold on, it's 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 going to keep the. It's going to keep the wrapping uh, for old lines and for new lines. It'll. No. Yeah, we're finding all sorts of weird edge cases, aren't we? What if I bump the font size up a little bit, like twenty-two point? What does that do? Yeah, it's going to be 30 seconds-ish. Anyway. It's also not, it doesn't seem to be aligning on the baseline. You see that? It's like the one, two, three, four is above Clayman's name. Is that, that might also be contributing to the wrapping problem, right? If they were aligned on the baseline, it might wrap better huh. what can i say the the uh the overlay is optimized for comic for drama sans right okay um yeah so we're switching we're switching this i don't need this class anymore back to uh, this becomes a table. And do I need, I think I do need to have this use the same kind of, uh, where is it? It needs to be in a shrinking container, just like the other thing. Let me just copy this. Whoa. <laughs> Surprise me there with that. Thanks for the sub, Shafalton. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah, the the overlay noise um shocked me a little bit. What font size am I at right now? We're at um twenty two pixels. Should we go up to twenty four? Twenty four. Is it enough to change the font slider, or do I have to change something else? Yeah, I know. I need to fix that. I'll probably move the sub stuff to the left. 
But I have to go into stream elements to do that, and that's a little bit more of an ordeal for me. Yeah, the emotes are kind of... Are the emotes scaled by the font size, too? There we go. The font size just popped up. Uh, some longer, longer text to test the wrapping. Yeah, it's a little funny. Oh, why does it take so long to update it? I think because Chris has it on a 30-second-ish timer, like he said. <laughs> you tested it in 29 pixels, but you think that might be too big. Yeah, mine's at... So mine... What did I say that I set it to just now? 24. This is 24. But then I also have, um, you know, it's only this wide, right? So I don't know what the font size combined with the window size does. I'm not the expert at overlays. It, uh, I don't think it's scaled or transformed. I think, well, like a second check. Here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, now I'm going to have to, uh, cancel that. Oh, I token, aren't I? Hold on. I shouldn't have done that. Just a second. <laughs> that was silly of me. Revoked. Yeah, I accidentally showed the OAuth token there. I guess I can't show that on screen because the OAuth token is in the URL. Oops. So how is it still able to work even though I just uh, invalidated the OAuth token? Shouldn't it stop working? Oh, you have a you got a session token from the OAuth token. Okay. Well, I guess I'll let it continue running. Does that mean I can show it now? What else? Is, so it's revealing a OAuth token which is now defunct. So I guess I can show what it was. The only other thing I'd other well, I guess we don't want to reveal the URL. How do I just hide the URL only? I really can't. So I can just tell you, it's I have the width set to 400, the height set to 600. And if I go to transforms, this is what it's set to. Yeah, the size 400 by 600 is the same as the, um, as the uh, browser source width and height. So it shouldn't be shrinking or expanding it. It's just changing its position. Yeah. Oh, the Twitch WebSocket connection is what the token's for? Okay. So this will work until it um, has to get another connection, and then, and then it'll stop working. I'll get a new token when that happens. I just feel like a noob now that I leaked the token on stream. All right. Aha, this is what I was doing. The rite of passage. Yeah, I've only done it like three times now. <laughs> when do I pass? <laughs> okay, table. You know, the, the, the severe indentation here means I, I really need to make this a subcomponent. 
but I don't feel like doing it right now. I'll, I'll do that on some refactoring day in the future. Instead, I'll just pretend. Oh, I can't pretend that much. I can't scroll more to the right. Oh, well, that's as much as I can pretend. That is not so much indented. Selectable rows. Okay, this is not the right class name. Let's just remove that. And what do I want in terms of... Okay, hold on. I move that off screen to look at something else. Right, ID. Or really, it's just going to be index. I guess we'll still call it ID preview. Access. Actions, okay. And then this is going to be tiles. And I'll leave that in there, but comment it out for now. And then tiles is going to make a bunch of rows. And I'm going to want to have um, space to add a new row, right? Um, hold on. Oh, this didn't have a new add. Okay, I did it differently here. I had an add button and then it would add a new row versus the way I've been doing it recently is by having an add row. I like that way better. So let's copy that from here. Write a special add row. Uh, right down here, right? Yep. So those have to be empty. I guess we'll put this in. Actually, what if I just make it like have an add button here? Add here. Really, this should be up up there too. Oh, I'm so indecisive. Oh, Wireshark shouldn't sh reveal anything because um, it'll probably be all encrypted anyway, right? Oh, and let's say he was writing a Twitch bot that used HTTP and not HTTPS. Yeah, that would be kind of embarrassing. Okay, I need to use the restroom. I'll be right back. Just a minute or so. They decrypted it? Wow. Okay. <laughs> that shows some dedication there. Isn't it, hard to, isn't it hard to decrypt something that you see on screen that's been encrypted? You'd have to, like, see enough of the session. I guess if you saw the whole session, you would see the establishment. you see the, the key exchange, right? Uh, let's see. Didn't I have a field for this? 
I guess I didn't. Um, maybe I'm just not setting a size here. New tile access. Set new tile access. Make that a state. New tile access. Set new tile access is use state. Eh. Zero for the default. And um, that whole thing is the submit for that form, right? Wait a minute, there's two forms, aren't there? Can you have a form embedded inside another form? That doesn't really make sense. Okay, that for actually the outer form is going is going to go, I think. Let's remove the outer form. So that means I'm going to remove this update. Cause that's not, yeah, it's not going to really make much sense. It'll be um, individual actions in here, actually. I like, I like the blinking water. <laughs> Left it in there for now. Okay, that access goes. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of this. Actually makes it a bit cleaner because I don't need to have this junk. This effect hook stuff. How's the game dev going? Kind of slow. Kind of struggling with phaser a bit. I, I'm, I got um, some test animation here going between two tiles. But what I'm aiming for today is to try to, uh, for example, the NPCs, right? There, I have I actually have artwork for two different frames for each of these NPCs. I would like them to alternate back and forth between them so that instead of it, the dog, for example, or this guy looking frozen, that it at least alternate between two frames. And um, that's a combination of doing this this kind of animation, but in a more um, programmatic way and not hacked. And then having a, a user interface for um, setting up the, the actual frames. So the texture only has one frame for each NPC. So I'll update the texture to have both frames, and then I'll have the UI so I can set up each of these to have two separate frames. So it's slow. Yeah, pretty much custom. I'm using Phaser for the rendering for the WebGL stuff, but I'm basically going straight to Phaser's um, Sprite uh, API to say what what to draw where. That's as, that's as much of an engine as I'm using as the Phaser uh, Sprite stuff. And um, I don't know, would you, would you call Re React a game engine? I'm using Re React for all this user interface work. Let's see. Yeah, it, it is fun to do it myself. It's gonna be it's, it's gonna be slower though. But in the end, you know, hopefully I get exactly what I want and not s extra stuff that I don't need. React game engine, yeah. Who would have thought of that, huh, Clayman? <laughs> you can you can say that altogether React is part of the game engine because it's rendering the user interface for the game, right? Okay. Why did I do it this way? I don't know what I was doing here. I just remove this, or will I regret mo removing this? Re will I regret moving this later? Probably not. Now, what was I doing here? I don't know. Let's just delete it. Okay, this ultimately calls that... 
That's the only reason we're doing that, is to set the access flag. Okay, I don't need any of this, actually. We're going to just delete it. Yeah, why am I doing all this stuff? Oh, this is filling in the React state if you select something, right? So I guess I still want this part of it. Okay, what did I delete then? Right, because it's selected tile access I got rid of. Right, selected tile access. So uh, all this, actually then this whole hook goes too. Right. So this is just setting up the tiles, asset and name. 210. Yeah, so this row I was planning to remove anyway. So goodbye. Cool, so the idea is that instead of there being an update, I would, um, oh wait a minute, this still needs an update, doesn't it? I still need this to be in a form in case I change these. Oh no, I was gonna move them into here, I think. I was gonna move them into here, and then I would take probably take this and put it up top here. I don't know if I just do that now. So the div with the image in it, that's on the left, this thing. Let's move it over to the right. And it, should I go put it in the shrinking container? No, I should do that. Okay, it's moved over there, and then I'm going to remove this because it's going to go in here, and these are going to be editable, and there'll be an update. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's this part here. Actually, I wonder if then, hmm. I wonder if I should move this down here because I'm going to need a more space for defining the animation frames. It's a good thing I can move these around pretty easily. I'll leave it where it is for now. So let's fix this table next, I guess. So instead of being a div, it's a row. Uh, let me copy from here. This kind of a thing. Uh, we can still use the ID for the key, but that doesn't change. That's pretty much the same. Okay, I could have just made a TR. I could have just made the div into TR. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I kind of mess with that. And then um, this becomes TR. All right, and then there's a bunch of TDs. So this just has the ID in it. And then the preview has that in it. And then. It was access, right? So it's uh selected tile set. What's this num tiles doing here?
Oh, this is that trick. You load the texture to figure out how many tiles there are. Okay, I got it. Oh, and this is how you get that. I was wondering how to do this earlier, how I did it before. How you get an array of counting numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes. Okay, I think I actually wanted to add one here to make it one based. The tiles are just feeling a little numb today. Yep, that happens. If you're learning a language, you probably should not be making a game engine. Well, that's one way to learn the language. It's like jumping into the deep end of the pool and to, and to learn how to swim, right? I think it's fine. You um, need to make mistakes sooner or later, and then you learn from those mistakes. If you'd like to get some mud, you have the best mud. <laughs> it sounds like it's a reference to something. Oh, you're Mud Man Steve. I got, I gotcha. I got it. Let's just leave that empty. I want to see if I got, if I'm on the right track here. Interesting. Look at that. It's wider than it should be. Did I have that width set wrong? That's weird. How is that happening? Elements. I don't need to see that, although it is, it is cool. I don't really need to see it right now. Hold on. Oh, it's not in a TD. Duh. Duh. In fact, I wonder if I can just make... Well, no, this is what we want because um, I want the border to fit around it. There we go. Although it seems like it's wider than it should be, but that might be because the table is expanding to fill the space. Let's see. No, it is still wider than it should be. Why is that? Why is it 90 pixels wide? Is it just expanding to fill the space? Maybe. Well, no, hold on. Why would that be 90 by 34? There's no reason for that to be 90. That's 32 by 32. Why is that 90 by 34? Oh, because of the title, Preview. Ah, I see. All right. Yeah, Toulouse, you got it. You got it. Just mud. My game needs more mud in it. I can supply some mud. USDA A plus mud. <laughs> Tile 4 is dirt. I suppose if we combine tile 4 with tile 1, well, tile 6 was sort of like a swampy thing. So that's sort of muddy, although maybe not brown mud. It's more of like a greenish mud. Uh, okay. I'm getting there slowly. I'm not printing out the access because I didn't do that yet. Uh, yes. This is where I wasn't quite sure. Oh, uh, I, hmm. I think it's selected tile set dot tiles ID access. There we go. So these are um, a bit fields, so that's why you can't walk on water. Um, but you can walk on land, and then you can't walk through mountains unless you have that bit set. All right, and I guess we're making that into um, an input. So I can make it adjustable. Hmm. You know, the other thing I thought of is just now is... Um, This might not be in range. How did I... Hmm. 
I regret deleting this stuff. What did it have before? Don't care about that. Do I? No, that was on purpose. Maybe I wanted this after all. Um, let's get that back. Isn't that nifty? You can just just unroll unroll it, get it back. Like, let's say I don't want that. I want that back. Although it's scrolls funny when you do that. Clay man or mud man? Wait a minute. Is this a man conspiracy? Is clay man and are clay man and mud man in this together somehow? To drive the market for clay and mud? <laughs> okay, this is important to know how many tiles there are. What do you know what? Hmm. Set num tiles goes to num tiles. What if we make num tiles something that we put into this effect hook here? And I don't, well, hold on, let me think about this. Right, if there's none selected, we don't care. Um, actually, I want, hmm, actually want to separate these out a bit. Actually, I think what I want is this. Trying to understand what I was doing here in this old code. <laughs> U.S. Department of Agriculture? A claim is not in the U.S., so... I don't know, is there an equivalent to the U United States Department of Agriculture where Clayman is? Or is this completely unregulated clay we're talking about? Uh oh, dog barking. Hold on. Sorry, some interruptions. The dog's defending our property. <laughs> Doggo, exactly. Hold on a sec. Sorry. Kids are trying to come over and play. I'm like, I'm working right now. <laughs> I'm totally distracted now, too. So the reason I'm doing all this crap is because this tile set might not actually have tiles in it. Um, because we have to actually load... The way this worked is it would load the um, image and then come back here and it would get the width of the image to f calculate how many tiles there should be. So the new way, I think what we should do is just assume that there are there's, there's no um, tiles to begin with and we add them. So...
And the way I was going to put the names in here, right? Um, they're going to be editable. Gosh, I'm having such a hard time thinking about this stuff. What if I just look at what the state looks like? Okay, it's an array. Right, so each one has a name and an asset in it. So I guess what, I, what I'm going to have is I'll have a new name, new asset. Or do I have tile sets and then new tile sets? Depends on what, how, what's, where this tile sets comes from. It comes from tile sets in the session reducer. And it gets, comes directly from the server. Right, when we select one, we're just getting a reference to it, which I guess is fine. Okay, then how does it, how does the update work? Update tile set. Okay, it puts it directly, so that's not going to work very well. In fact, there, that's a little kludge there that tells me that I was doing it wrong. Really, I should put the exact things in here and not delete things out of it like that. Okay, so let's do that. So it'll have asset name tiles and version. And version. And then remove th that. And this is tile set dot ID. And as long as this is always an array, then yeah, then I don't need to do this expanding, this resizing and all that junk. I don't need to do that. So where do we add a new add tile set? What does that do? Okay, so we need to put in here tiles. Actually, why are these, why do all these have quotes? I don't know. Okay, name and then tiles, empty, set, and it was asset, right? Actually, I'm going to be changing this too so that the action contains the name and the asset. Yes, okay, so uh, just leave that the way it is. So the tiles could come in with no the tile sets the tile set selected could have no tiles in it. I don't need these. Really, I just need a selected tile set index. Yep, okay, and then, yeah, I don't need, I don't think I need any of these effect hooks at all. Why do I have that? I don't think I need that. 
search for it and see. Was that for the access thing? I don't think I need it here, actually. When we update it, we'll do the parsing. That would be in this thing, right? Update tile set. Okay, that I need to be careful about. That we have to do a map, I think. Map. Um, yes, tile. Map returns an array, right? Yes. Okay, so it's an array of objects, yes. And there's access, so that's tile, so it's a parse int tile access 10. And then what did I do wrong? Oh, this, that has to be a value, not code. There we go. You know what I should do here as well? Um, this should uh, use new name and new asset. And this should be new access. And that's added, right? Let me, th let me look and see. Um, update tile set. Yeah, we increment. Is that the right thing to do, though? Oh, it's making a new object anyway. Well, let's not do that, actually. Let's do that. That makes more sense to me. Just read a reply on a Reddit post you made about the living costs in Sophia. One person said, if you cook yourself, 100 euros should be enough food for every month. That's pretty good. Yeah, well, you, you have to count all the time and effort to to buy and cook for yourself, I guess. All right, so reflect tile sets. Was it? Should it come in here through? Ref mm, no, this is this is middleware. I want the. Um, Reducer. Session reducer. Tile sets. Yeah, so we're going to go into here and say action tile sets map. Tile set. Right. And that had the ID in it, right? Okay, hold on. Um, am I already calculating this stuff? Let me see. No, it comes directly from the message. And the message won't have the ID in it. No, well, it must. Oh, right, the server is including it. Okay, so, yeah. So it's going to be ID the server will include it and then name oops name asset uh, tiles and version and but then tiles has to be also mapped so on this all this all have to have um, tile set dot in front This has to be a map. So tiles map. 
And then the whole point of doing all this is I can have the the space in Redux for the new name for every tile set and then the um, new asset for every tile set. And let's sort this correctly. Okay, and then tile will have access. So it's tile access, but also have new access. All right. Oh, yeah, it crashed. <laughs> Not done yet. Uh, cooking your, your, for yourself? Cooking for yourself is healthy. Cooking yourself, not for, not very healthy. Unless you're a bad cook, Clayman. If you're a bad cook and you don't know, you, you can't manage to cook yourself, then it's neither healthy nor unhealthy, I guess. Yeah, so it's just space so that while you're editing it, you can um, have space to store it. These are the editable fields, asset and name, and then the access. Um, I'm gonna have to add more actions to to like um, to stage them, though. That's the only problem. Ah, I have to do the same thing here, don't I? What if I um cheat and make this something I um. And copy up here. I don't know where to put it. Make tile set shape. And then I can just do this here. Filter should work. Select. I don't need a selected tile anymore or tiles. I oh, know I still need selected tile set. I don't need. I do need selected tile. <laughs> I need them both. <laughs> All right. Right. So the updated. Again, I need to um, make its shape. Oops. Here. And here. Um. Let's. Hmm. No, let's keep it the way it is. It'll end up getting its own copy. That's fine, I guess. All right. I feel like I'm not explaining everything I'm doing that I'm kind of just mumbling. I'm sorry about that. I did catch the bad joke. Indeed. You know what helped me catch it is that it was... Um, the logic was flipped from what you'd expect, right? Cooking for yourself being very healthy. So I'm like, wait a minute, why would he say not very healthy? Oh, cooking yourself, yeah. <laughs> All right. This is just slow work because I'm, re I'm basically redesigning this panel. So I don't actually need that because I have a selected tile set, right? Yeah, why don't why am I not yeah, I already have a selected tile set, so I don't need this. Alright. And there's no there's not gonna really be a submit button anymore, is there? It's there's gonna be um actually there's gonna be a submit um gonna be different uh, different submits. 
based off well, let me just copy what I have what I did here for dialogue. Actually dialogues is not a good example. What do I want instead? Um yeah, maybe entities panel. Right, so I had like submit component or entity. So I want the same kind of thing. Prevent default and then Yeah, these are adding, so there's going to be an add, and then what does change do? Update. Aha. So I have that, and that... Uh, where did that go? Now I'm lost. <laughs> Update tile set. Where does that go? It does go to middleware. Okay, and that submits it. Actually, that is what I want, isn't it? Um... So I don't need I don't need a button on every single one. This is did I completely break this now? It won't even load. Shoot. <laughs> but I can look I can look at this. I still don't know why that happens. So right. Um I could keep this. So because, yeah, there could still be update buttons, but each one call it, does it for a different tile set. And it's going to do a bunch of this stuff, though. Is that? Okay, okay, wait a minute. Um, did I make sure the tiles was there? Let me see. Reflect. Tiles. Okay, I didn't. I need to make, I need to be careful about this. It might not have tiles. Some of them don't. So I need to do this. Otherwise, empty array. There we go. Oh, and this should be name, not new name. Yeah, okay. That would have been embarrassing if I let that slide too far. Uh, I feel like I'm a scatterbrained right now. I won't need that. I'm hoping to get back on track soon. Oh, not to do passwords? <laughs> Rename your dog. That's not how passwords work. Oh, Toulouse did see that four minutes ago. Thank you, Toulouse. I just didn't see your chat. I'm a little scatterbrained today. You didn't notice? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This had an event. Why? Oh, that's for the form. Okay, so that's always for a new one. So I, I won't do this for an updated one. Right, so I'm getting rid of this. Uh, let's...
let's 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 use this for on add tile set and then um because I had one of those right add a button for add tile oh thanks for the follow by the way hunter two <laughs> you did a twenty four hour stream you wouldn't be scatterbrain. Well, I would just, you would see me just devolve into, at the end, I'd be like just gibberish, right? I think I was going to repurpose add tile set, right? To take the new fields from it. Yeah. Um, did I do that yet? No, but I thought about doing it here. So let's do it now. Um, tile set. I'll do tile set. Actually, what if, what if I just this this devolves into just being a create create a new component, right? What if I okay? Let's make it a little bit sane here. Name asset. So that's just name and asset. So add, add tiles that takes a name and an asset. Uh, okay, that's why I had this. So this, let's say on submit add tile set, and then this would be um, on add tile set. And oh, I did want to have a state hook for this, didn't I? So const um, new tile set name, set new tile set name. And asset. And do it like that. And then we're done. Password masking them, mask them as crawler, right? Okay. Why did I do that? Why am I sorting them by ID? Oh, I guess because I wanted to. I guess it makes sense. Actually, I probably want to sort them by name eventually. Don't care about the ID so much. Anyway, uh, selected row. What's this? Right. If it is selected, it's selected. Got it. Okay. Are we back to being compiled? Probably not. Num tiles is not defined. No, it is not. Right. So we're not actually going to do that anymore. So we don't need that. Wait a minute. It still says it's not defined. Ah, because I'm still using it. Right. So we're going to actually um, use the... Uh, hmm. Yeah, this means I'm never going to allow deleting an individual tile, am I? That would be bad. Yeah, what happens if I want to remove an old tile? I guess I could never do it? No, if I want to be able to add and remove tiles, I need to make the tile ID, like, unique in some way. I'll have to put more thought into that. I guess right now we'll just keep it. Um, we're not going to ever be able to remove them. We'll only be adding. I guess if you remove one, it shifts all the others, right? Yeah, we're going to want to use unique identifiers, aren't we? Shoot. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that before. 
So we will say num tiles. At this point, we can safely assume the tile set has a tiles array. So it's actually then I it might not be selected. What is if it's not? It's null. Okay. Yeah. So this is um selected tile set tiles length. 137. New, okay, these, these aren't set yet. Yeah, though that needs to be a state. New tile access, right? And yes. Anyway, I hear some scratching at the door. I wonder if that's the kitty wanting back in. Okay, see ya, Joe Mega. Uh, I'll be right back because I think there's some beast scratching at the door wanting to get in. The beast. Beast. Doesn't he look hungry? Doesn't he look like he might rip your face off? He's actually very passive. Grumpy cat, yes. He lives. He is very fluffy. He gets more fluffy every day. He gets so fluffy that you have to brush him every single day or else he gets tangles and knots. Poor cat. Tile is null, oh no. Tile set is not defined. Well, that's a problem. Um, oh, yes. This has to deal with that, doesn't it? Oh no, it is null. Okay, okay. if an individual object is null. I didn't deal with that correctly. That can happen, yes. So that's what that was this reducer, right? So Yeah, it would be um this is if we have it. So tile. Otherwise Let's set some defaults. Okay, it didn't crash. Okay, that loaded correctly. This is good. Hmm. So let's make, um, let's do this next, where I can change the access field of one of these. Or should I test room? I don't want to test removing. Let's just test. I didn't, I didn't do the add correctly. Shoot. Um, on add tile set. Yeah, I never did that submit, did I? Okay, I didn't, ha I didn't do the new row at all. Is it the four hour mark? Yeah. I'm not going to finish this today, am I? Here's the new row thing. Yeah, I might have to just stop at some point and continue this tomorrow. Yeah, that... That goes in the table right here, actually. Right there. So this is, uh, I should give maximum sizes for this. It's just size equals. And this is, um, tile set name input size. 
And this is new tile set name, right? Yep. And this is set new tile set name. And then asset. And then add, and that submits the form. And this isn't in a form. Oops. Um, okay. How did I do this before? It's inside of a form at some point. Oh, the form is the shrinking container, so this becomes the form. Yeah. And this form has an on submit, it which is on submit add tile set. Whoops. Uh, I'm lost. I'm lost. Help, I'm lost. Where am I? I'm here. Here. Are. Now I'm not lost anymore. Is that right? Yes. Okay, I didn't define those. Mm. I don't need that much characters for it. Uh, maybe a little bit more. How about 15? That add button, where does that go right now? Oh yeah, that's old. Let's get rid of that. Um, yeah, that really didn't belong there anyway. Cool. So will this work at all? A, B, C, D, E, F. It actually works. Remove it. Remove didn't work. Or it didn't update if it did work. Yeah, remove is not working. Quite right. Huh. It blanked it out or something. That's a weird way to do it. Why is it still in the list then? 5753. Yeah, it still exists. It just got blanked out for some reason. Uh, remove tile set, I guess, is broken. It's destroying the. It. Okay. So that should have worked. Why would that not work? Remove. That worked. 5755, right? Remove, and it's gone. Wait a minute. Why did it create a new one? Is it creating a new, is it removing and then adding a new one? Is that what it's doing? I think that's what it's doing. Oops. Is it because it's a uh, form? Well, like, hold on. I'm lost. I'm lost. Found again. Okay, remove. I mean, it's inside a form. But it shouldn't submit it, right? Because it does stop propagation. This should be like that anyway. Why Why would that call an ad? Uh, let's put a breakpoint and see. Definitely called it. Ooh. Okay, so 
which happens first? That's what I want to know. And then hit remove. I don't get it. Why would that submit the form? I don't understand how that gets back into this. That's only if the button's a submit button, right? But this one is not a submit button. It's just a... Oh, I didn't, I didn't set the type. That's probably what it is, right? I didn't set the type. You have to say say button or else it's, it becomes a submit. Okay, that's probably what it is. A, B, C, D, F, and then it gets added, and then I remove it, it removes it, fixed, okay. All right, and then the other thing is whenever we add one, it should clear out these fields. I forgot to do that, so that is um, on, so that's down here, right? I have to say set new tile set name, empty string, set new. Hey there, Fuller, how are you doing? It was uh, fun watching you um, do th Blender stuff this morning for a little bit while I was getting up. I'm kind of struggling with phaser and react stuff today. But look, I got water that blinks in, in and out of existence. That's a prototype of my tile animation system. I'm working on this user interface right now to... Um, I'm changing it around so that now we we have a table here for every uh, tile, and then I'll be able to add new tiles. And then when we have a tile selected, I, I want to be able to show the animation frames for each tile and be able to tweak them and add to that. But I'm running out of time for today. But at least I'm getting back to where this is in a sane state. I can remove that one, and it's removed. I don't have this add doesn't work yet. So I have to do this add. I have to make I have to make these editable. I have to add an update and a reset button to these actions. Make ac access editable and then um I need to uh, make this selectable when it's selected I need to show the frames table which I don't have anything for yet. Well thanks. This I think this always feels like rough you know on what's the right word? It doesn't look nice yet because I haven't put any time into the style and the art in this user interface. It's very plain and utilitarian. Hey there, Mr. Balrog. I guess I'm always first doing function and then form later. It's an unpolished diamond. Well, thank you very much. When will I get time to polish it? I don't know. Um, yeah, but I'm running out of time right now. So I also need to figure out, like I was thinking before, right now these are hard-coded to be indices. If I were to say delete the dirt tile, that would shift everything up and then all this stuff would be drawn wrong. So I need to, I think I need to make these IDs unique somehow. Which means I need to remember like the last used ID. I think that's what I would do. I probably wouldn't want to allow it to be deleted if it's being used in the world anywhere. Right? Let me just make some notes. So, um, need to assign unique IDs to tiles. Don't allow a tile to be deleted if it's being used in the world. Or either that, or I guess we could allow it, but it ends up using some kind of default tile if it's been deleted. Uh, perhaps don't allow. Um, uh, we need to to 
keep track of the next unused tile ID for each tile set. So that when you make a new one, like if I deleted eight and then added a new one, it should be uh, five, six, seven, nine, not, not reusing eight. And then the mountains would just go to some kind of default texture and not get confused with the new one I added, basically. And yeah. I guess, what am I going to work on tomorrow? I need to, well, I don't need to write this down in notes. It's pretty obvious. I need to make all this stuff editable, and I need to make it so when I pick a tile that I can edit the, the animation frames. And I need to work on my stream overlay. Shifting that a bit, and... I guess I'm okay with the way that the font looks now. The... Emotes are a little big, but that's more of Chris's issue than mine. I'm using, this is a, a new stream overlay called Stream Parrot that CM Griffin is uh, developing. I'm helping him test it. Okay. Yeah, I got to run, I think. Uh, tomorrow, I'll, I think I'll just, res I'll continue this work. So it's going to be con working more on this user interface, completing that. And then um, when I once I get it so where I can define the animation frames for individual tiles, then I'll take out this hard-coded um, blinking water and actually use the f animation information to animate all the tiles. So that's what I'll try to get to tomorrow. Sorry I couldn't finish it all today, but you know, sometimes things take twice as long or sometimes even seven times as long as you think they will take. I'm just looking to see who I can raid now. So I can go eat and... Come back at this fresh later. Wow, there are a lot of people streaming right now. Mike Sai is streaming? He's usually in the evenings. Simuleos is going. Simuleos is always a fun stream. I haven't um, rated him in a while. I'm watching an ad, though. I'll rate him, though. Looks like he's only an hour in, so he'll probably be streaming a little bit more. Simuleos works on algorithms, and his stream today looks like he's working on superfluid analysis, I guess. Is giving curls a world to twirl a superfluid. I'm still watching an ad, so I don't know. That ad's making me hungry, too. <laughs> yep, he's working on... Um, some kind of algorithm, so it's fun stuff. I'm going to go rate him right now. So I'll be back tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1700 hours UTC. I should uh, also plug my Discord. If you want to chat off stream, there's that Discord. You can ask questions there. Also, I try to post beforehand, like my stream plan and any other announcements there. So I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your day, and I hope you enjoy Simuleos. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.